Welcome back to Otaku Daikun. We're going to be continuing through a lot more of the story for this summer camp adventure. Uh, adventure. <laughs> um, yeah, they started off with only the tiniest little bit of story before. And now they're actually, you know, I, I, I got a good backlog of content to go through with you all because I hate how these events are time gated. Fake Grand Carnival's dub is sometimes funnier. I really enjoyed the dub. Yeah. It's good. I, I like how they kept everything consistent across all of Aniplex's um, dub casting. Am I your senpai, Seth? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I could be your senpai, baby. I could take away the pain. I don't know about that. <laughs> Let me know if there are any audio issues or other things. I think it's fine. Probably it's the same settings as last. So we're just going to get on in there. Um, it's really weird. They've got section one, two, three, four consecutively to do that. But um, then... There's like a lot more like little sub events flying all around and I don't know what order it's all supposed to happen in. Like the event where you go out with Kiara and get attacked by the rooster creature thing. Um, the cockatrice, I believe. Um, that isn't part of the uh, section one, for instance. Yet that was what came. Yeah. Let us begin. Enjoying holiday. The cool summer breeze. Ah, ukulele. <laughs> the Grand Carnival dub is on Crunchyroll. It is available. And so, far, far away, another summer night came and went. Was the fatal mistake in making that decision? What decision? Or did it all begin when we ran into her? Blame Kiara. <laughs> Summer means mountains. Mountains means camping. And in Japan, camping means curry. Yes, it's perfect. I'm afraid I have no idea what's perfect about it, Sigurd. There's more to meals than just eating things for sustenance. The surrounding environment is also important. There's a huge difference in happiness between eating all by oneself, solely to acquire nutrients, and eating curry amongst the friends while laughing and enjoying their company. As members of Caldea's advanced team, it is time you learned this lesson. Spending time with friends and family in this manner is one of the best parts of camping, my sisters. Last I checked, we weren't your sisters. Maybe sister-in-law, right? Though I will admit the curry is delicious. Oh, it looks like I'm all out. I think I'll go back for seconds. Hmm? Hmm? Here, beloved. I served this curry up just for you. Please have it. Nothing would make me happier. <gasps> Thank you, honey. Uh, get a room. Okay, yes, I know she was still hungry, and I know she was too embarrassed to take another helping on her own. But that doesn't mean you can just casually hand her more like that. Then again, I guess it was, wasn't very casual at all, was it? What's the problem with giving her seconds? She looks so happy. She's blushing. You can see exactly what she's feeling. She's beautiful. Oh my, what a wonderful sight. Last day for Castoria, huh? It 
warms my heart to see how much you all love Mr. Sigurd. We don't love him! We hate him! The J the Real McCoy, thank you so much. Why am I getting Friday the 13 vibes, especially with Sigurd looking like Chad had a counselor? Well, unfortunately, there's not going to be nearly as much um, teenage uh, boning <laughs> in this Caldean summer camp as there would be in Friday the 13th. How did they tackle Dumzid in the English dub? Uh, his random English phrases were so much fun in the original. Oh, right! You mean, like, that was Apollo, too, right? The the weird little sheep thing that was talking to Aresh Kigal? Um... Uh, I, I don't exactly remember. He said some pretty funny shit. They, they seemed kind of out of place and random. So yeah, I, I think you'll be happy. Maybe it's not quite as good, because it's one of those things where it's like Japanese absurdity, but it's pretty good. Hello, me mister. <gasps> Wait, no, we didn't mean it like that. We always love you, sister. It's just that, um... <laughs> it's all right. Oh, it's all right, my beloved Brynhild. It's completely understandable that your adoring sisters would bear some ill will to the one they see as having stolen you from them. Rest assured that it doesn't bother me. I am quite sure that one day they'll come to understand the bond we share. <laughs> Why you? <clears throat> Okay, easy does it. There's no need to fight. <laughs> right. Here, everyone. In addition to curry, we also have meat for those who'd like some. Ooh, I would. Is this mermaid meat? Uh, d no, it isn't. I see. Oh, well. I guess it would be pretty hard to catch mermaids up here in the mountains. Mermaids are sexy. Don't do that. Would you like some more curry, too, senpai? Third plate full, here I come. What an appetite you have. You know, I've always admired strong and healthy people. Anyway, what did you say your group's name was? Caldea? I must say, your Caldean servants are so good at cooking. All your food is just as nutritious as it is yummy. Do you have any headcanons of what your servants are doing in camp? <laughs> um, no, but I'd like someone to try and draw some. Um, Archangel Glenn, thank you. Here is five for the cast, uh, summer fund towards getting some more summer servants. They haven't come back, like, there's no new banner yet, right? Also, finally got your Castoria, but only just got Berserker Brin and tons of CEs. Yeah. Well, Brynhildr's good. There's a lot of Berserkers I don't need, but, yeah. You would be my meat to summer Murasa. Oh, you would beat your meat? There you go. Yeah. Anyone got any doggy treats for <laughs> you? Who's your cute little Valkyrie? Who's your good Valkyrie? Woof, woof. Interesting. Y'all really like Emiya's outfit, huh? He? Whoops, just a bit of seam foam up here. In the mountains. Pretend I didn't say anything. Tell me who he is! Is he your boyfriend? Hmm, and just like that, it's almost nighttime. If what Seshio and Lily said is right, we should probably retire to the uh, cottage until tomorrow. Odysseus is doing. is being the best camp counselor with Castoria supporting him is adorable. Huh. Maybe I haven't gotten that far. Scooby Snacks. A steak. Wanted Summer Kiara because need to keep up my collection of Moon Cancers. Yeah. Yeah, they're good for variety. Yes, I suppose we should. Do you know if anyone, if they patched that glitch on uh, Kiara that I'd heard about? I wonder if there's anything we can watch on the TV. 
I tried to find a channel earlier, but all I got was a staticky black and white picture. I think that means there's nothing on the air right now. Either that, or we may be out of range of any television signals out here. Who would be broadcasting TV in a fucking singularity? Anyway, <clears throat> that makes sense. Do you have any recommendations on CEs for Castoria? A lot of people are going to be using her, so if you have your Da Vinci ones, put them on. No apologems. At least they fixed it. Did they fix that part where we're suddenly randomly gender bend? <laughs> I didn't even notice it. But yeah, so, uh. I don't know exactly, uh, what glitch it was. I just heard from other people. Then I guess that's a waste of a good TV. Not at all. There are many other good ways to use a television. Is that. V.R. Hello, Master. My apologies for the delay in getting here. Unfortunately, it took longer to finish the fine-tuning this new spirit origin than I anticipated. But never mind that. As I was saying, there are other ways to use a television. You mean... video games? Video games! Don't you, Tomoe? I do indeed, Lady Mashu. As we have little else to do at the moment, why not take this time to enjoy some video games? Don't worry, I brought plenty of controllers to go around. Welcome to Mario Kart! Woohoo! And suddenly, Caldea was no longer united in friendship. All because of a blue fucking turtle shell! This will be a lovely way for all of us to pass the time together. I brought as many of my games as I could, so we will have plenty to choose from. Oh, some of them are fairly competitive. In fact, some involve chaotic, bloody battlefields. But worry not, no matter what happens in a game, you are in no real danger. Instead of doing damage to debuffed enemies, it was doing it based on debuffs to Kiara. Yeah, that's weird. Um, it doesn't sound like a lovely way to pass the time to me. Hmm. Yes, this could be the best option for all of us to enjoy the time we're about to spend together. Yes, exactly. Now come, let us go and have some fun. I'm gonna kick all your asses. <gasps> huh? Oh, oh, no, you don't. Hang on, have mercy. It's too late for that, Kohai. Have another kick to the face. Oh no, I was knocked out of the ring. I'm still managing to hold on, though only just. Forgive me, Lord Sigurd, but I must make use of your head. You meant as a platform? Now I can face Lady Yume Ren one-on-one. -on -one. Here I come. Sorry, Tomoe, time's up. And I've since got way more H uh, and since I've got way more HP than you, it looks like I'm the winner. Number one. Your opinion of the Tsukihime anime? God, it's been ages. Um I don't know if it's as atrocious as people tend to make it out to be, but it's not all that great either, yeah. Let me smash. No. Horse husband? Yeah, Yume Ren's um, beloved, what is it, Shang Yu? Is the version from the Lost Belts, the big horse centaur dude. I was no match for her whatsoever. <laughs> I couldn't do a thing against her. Just goes to show how strong often, uh, how the strong often stand alone, Kohai. Most impressive, you, Lady Yume Ren. You are as beautiful as you are strong. Alright, it's getting late. I'm going to bed. Make sure you're all ready to start investigating the hell out of this place tomorrow, got it? Then I suppose we should call it a day. Um, is it okay if I spend the night here too? Of course.
course, Lily. We've already got a private room set up for you. Oh, thank you. Okay then, good night, everyone. This must be one big ass cabin. I have the Sugihime anime tab open. Hmm. Did you miss anything too funny? I mean. I mean, we're still getting started. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? I travel the world in the seven seas. Everybody's looking for something. Panhuman history's mind inside Lost Belt Version's body. Is that so? I guess I didn't look into it that deeply. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. This will not stand. Truth, dreams, love, madness. If the heart can feel them, they may as well be real. It is beyond foolish to try and separate the ordinary from the abnormal only when convenient. It's all equally true. So from here on, you'll be entering a world of terror, fear, and utter despair. Please, please don't let this dream remain a dream. Chill, bro. Dude, Dean Stay Night is a pretty decent Fate adaptation. It does deserve better, but it's not horrible. Hello, Mask. I think I just heard something. Oh, it's you. So what do you find about this sexy? It's an unbuttoned shirt over a sort of tank top sweatery thingy. And just regular, like, he just, I don't know. Maybe the glasses. <laughs> Does he really look that good? I'm guessing you heard that sound just now, too. Mm-hmm. Then I guess we can rule out an auditory hallucination. Keep your guard up and be ready to fight. Once we get the others. Master? Lord Emiya? Murasaki, good timing. I'm afraid we need to investigate outside the bounded field for a little. Huh? Tonight's feature film is a slasher. Okay. Do I have to hit enter? I do, okay. A mysterious murderer appears during a full moon. Their name? Fandom. Is it possible to kill that which cannot die? <laughs> God damn it. Damn it, Nasu, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Uh, get some help. Nope, they're immortal. Good children are all safe. But bad grown-ups are doomed to die. So be careful. <laughs> End of preview. You don't have to tell me that. Oh, hey, little creepy kiddos. What was that? I guess it was some sort of movie trailer? Although, there weren't any moving pictures, just some words and the sound of a child laughing. Sounded like multiple kids, but... Eh. Not to mention that even if the TV did get reception, there wouldn't be any programs at this hour. <laughs> so you were the ones making that noise. Yikes, they're really tough. What the hell are these things? I don't know, but they're definitely far more durable than regular people. <sighs> and there's a lot of them. You could just spray them down and clean off all that blood. Ugh, master, I thought I heard something. Ah, what, what's going on? 
on! <laughs> that face, man. Spiralize. Favorite swimsuit summer for this summer? It might... Well, oh, you may Ren. Easily. Sorry. There you go. Stand back, Lady Elia. We'll make a huge mess if we fight them in the living room. Come on, Master. Let's take this outside. Oh my. Even at a time like this, he's still thinking about keeping a clean house? That's our Emia. Way to go, Guardian of the Kitchen. Is this really the time to be scaling down my domain? Seems appropriate to me. Ha! Yeah! Got you! Ruby! Yeah, yeah, on it. Searching. No enemies detected. You did it. Hold on. Aicha, what the hell's that beeping? Oh, weird. It was loud. <clears throat> Sheesh, that was a handful. Thanks for helping us out, Prince of Lanling. Not at all. I'm only sorry I couldn't get here sooner, Master. Thanks, Prince of Lanling. Still, those guys were a lot stronger than any ordinary human. Even more than I'd expected. Hmm? Blech. Ah! Did they just dissolve? They might have been under some sort of spell. Shikigami, maybe? They certainly didn't behave like ordinary people. They did leave their masks and outfits behind. Might be worth examining them more closely. Hmm? Phantom of the Opera? Guess this means he's an enemy servant here. Well, if he wants to fight, I don't see any reason to hold back. Looks like we've got another battle on our hands. Be careful, Master! Aye, aye, sir! Sir Emia of the kitchen table, you have been knighted thus. <sighs> ah! Whee! Oh, I've got you! How is he this strong? He's overpowering me with even with Master's assistance! No, my neck is losing consciousness. Ah. Hang in there, Prince of Lenling. I'm sorry, but this will hurt. Master, follow my lead. Trace on. <gasps> Emergency evade. Whee! Oh. You, you saved me. <coughs> Sorry for getting so rough. I did my best to hold back, but I still had to use my noble phantasm at point-blank range. Why don't you take a break and catch your breath? But what about... Yeah, I know, we still haven't solved the problem. <laughs> How is Phantom so tough? He's such a low star servant! Maybe he's been brainwashed? Is Adichan back? Once again, tell her thanks for Merlin. You managed to hit 1.5 million damage with Grey. Hell yeah! Jay the Real McCoy. Emia's new title will forever be Guardian of the Kitchen. All messer of kitchens beware. Praise the new kitchen god! Smack yourself in the face with the frying pan. Someone likes your support, Merlin. Oh, really? Good. Yeah, Connor. Got 1.5 million damage with Gray using the Merlin as a support. Nice! Well, let me know if you ever want to take a crack at this. I'm to change it up. Otherwise, you will. <laughs> yep, yep. Now that all the silhouettes in JP have been revealed and are now not related to South America, as far as we are aware, I just wonder which South American servants and allies we will really need. I don't know. It's definitely not my expertise. That's possible. But Phantom should have seriously potent resistance to anything that messes with his mind, thanks to high mental corruption. Basically, he's already fucking crazy. 
Do I watch Tomodachi game? No, I did not. So how is this even being done to him? This doesn't look good. Everyone quick, get back inside the cottage. The cottage? You sure? I know we're getting nowhere fast like this, but isn't it just going to be easier for him to pin us down indoors? It's not that. We'll never be able to defeat him unless we can figure out what's happening. Now please, hurry! Continue? Trace on. Okay, the junk I just projected against the door should hold for a little while, but it won't be long enough. What kind of junk? What sort of things can you project, Emia? Like a steel dildo? Especially not against that phantom's monstrous strength. That's alright. If my reading of the situation is correct, it'll take him some time to reach us. He stopped pounding on the door? Why would he do that? Because he's coming through the windows! Do you have some idea what's going on here, Murasaki? I can't yet say anything for certain. Right now I'm just guessing, really. As you know, this lo uh, Lord Phantom we just fought was both impossibly strong and incredibly durable. Yes, he was. It felt as though we were up against a servant straight out of mythology. I certainly can't remember Lord Phantom ever fighting like that in the time I've been at Caldea. Okay, so what am I watching um, this season? Love in Summertime Rendering. Getting down on Maiden Abyss. That's a new good continuation. Um, Call of the Night. That one's pretty dope so far. I, I like the character design. I'm a sucker for midriff. Um, da, 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 da. I'm watching Rental Girlfriend. Um, there are parts about it that are somewhat infuriating, but it's still really pretty waifu. Um, I am watching the new season of Utawaderumo, no? It's kind of a miracle they decided to go. Steel Dildo doesn't sound that helpful. Um, Devil is a part-timer season two. Uh, yeah, I am. I started that. It's, it's, uh, it's okay. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. It's not quite as good as the first season just because of the lower budget and different studio. Um, gonna be watching Danmachi. Um, when that does come out, hasn't yet. Could have sworn there was more. I did finish Komi Can't Communicate. I was also watching the Netflix Bastard, which is, it's, it's, it's pretty decent. Yeah. Um, I wish, I don't know, I still like the old 90s one better. No, I don't care about Overlord. I certainly can't remember. Oh, wait, where'd he said that? Bleach? That's not out yet, is it? Me neither. Oh, yeah, Licorice Recoil. That was the other one. That one's pretty fun. High budget, good voice acting. He was, he's always fought true to his assassin nature singing to mess with the enemy's mind before quickly closing in for a single fatal strike. Who the hell? No, don't text me while I'm live. You know I don't care. Slimy Sakai? Definitely not watching that. Uh, do not know Futopi or Futopai? I mean, okay, so what I, what I get from Bastard is that the Netflix version right now, 
there's more episodes dedicated to it. The story is truer to the manga, I'm assuming. And it is, um... It does tell the story better. Like, you get a better sense of the characters and understanding them. But stylistically, in terms of aesthetic, I definitely like, um... The original art style just a bit more. It's darker, more grisly, and I just love 90s anime. I, I do, it's so good. It's interesting because I thought for a second and I was gonna accuse the Netflix um, version of censorship. Not necessarily, I guess, but there was a part, I think it was like episode four or, yeah, I think it might have been episode four of the original OVA for Bastard in which um, weird, like, heavy metal vampire dude, like, rips off some uh, nun's clothing and it, you, you get a full-on bare breasts thing going on there. And um, that does not happen in the Netflix version, but the reason why is because... It, they're actually, it skips two different characters that are supposed to be in the uh, the story that I guess were in the manga but not the OVA to cut for time so they kind of just replaced them with generic church ladies I guess that were being captured by the vampire more anime spinoffs for Gurren Lagann could be cool Irony that the first season of Devil is a Part Normal only really covers the first two volumes of Light Novel. This new series picks up at the beginning of Volume 3. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That does make sense. And thank you again, Archangel Glenn. Heard that Death Note is getting a new live-action series being supervised by the... Duffer Brothers? I don't know who the hell that is. The real Phantom would never do that. It's simply not how he operates. Indeed, watching him fight just now was like watching the killer from a slasher movie. Huh? Remember when the TV turned on by itself and played that strange trailer? I just told you they didn't censor it. I, I was gonna accuse them of censorship at first, but it turns out that in exchange for that bare-breasted thing that was in the OVA, the more manga-accurate one introduces us to two different new waifu that are really good, so I, I, I really don't think they're doing that. In fact, the scene in which Yoko gets attacked by a weird slime thing that dissolves her, uh, her clothes is pretty much spot-on to what it was in the original. It's just a matter of which art style you prefer. But no, no, I'm really, really proud of Netflix, actually, to take this show that is so unashamedly, like, hardcore and violent, juvenile and sexual and all that stuff, and just having all that out there without, um, without, uh, any sort of compromise. It was good. Would you know how to unlock Mission 18 to continue the story? Um, no, but I'm sure it tells you if you just look in the In Progress select, uh, section. Usually it's just, repeat this node a certain number of times. Or you could, did I say something other than clothing? Was it Keihan and Shin Hari? H.R. Geiger, Noble Phantasm. That would be crazy. That would be crazy if he were, a, like, a foreigner. I, I think they've already had enough attempts at making Death Note. Like, just, just let it die now. It's not gonna be better. Well, I'm talking about in this political climate, though, with the woke crazies in the West and stuff, you know, for as much as people complained about the whole cuties thing, 
Like, they let the movie on there. And they didn't... They don't... Netflix doesn't seem like they remove content for censorship's sake. On either side, whether you like them for one thing or the other. And I think there's some good quality to that. That way you can criticize the work, but not necessarily Netflix for hosting the work. Yu Yu Hakusho live action. People don't even, like, remember that show as much anymore. It would be better to get, like, an anime reboot or something. It, but I don't think it needs one. Maybe just a nice, good HD reclean. It did? It did. Slasher. And you think it's relevant somehow? I do. In fact, I think that trailer may have been speaking to this very situation. Tonight's feature is a slasher. Yeah, yeah, I already know that. Their name, Vandom. But tonight's not a full moon. No, it wasn't. And yet, when I looked up at the night sky earlier, I saw that what should have been a crescent moon had become a full moon. Do you know when the next summer banner for this event is going to come out? I've heard that it'll be part two, because the summer events are usually like in two parts or something. Said that High School of the Dead isn't being continued from the looks of it because the author and making High School well High School of the Dead's author died. That's that's one big thing. Um, I guess other people who have that desire aren't aren't continuing it like they are with Berserk, right? Can't wait to see woke people talk about ancient Greek literature. Yeah, my suspicion is that the moon became full because this slasher showed up. So you think this phantom is the slasher the trailer mentioned? I do. I've been busy this week working on the next, the third volume of Lord Elmoloy, the second case files. And yet again, it's an hour long video. I hope you guys enjoy that. It takes a long time to make them, but they do wind up being pretty entertaining. This next part gets into some even bolder su uh, supposition on my part. But I think stepping into this singularity has put us in, well, a horror movie. Huh? Say what? Oh! I'm so embarrassed saying that out loud. This is exactly why I was so hesitant to bring this up. Was she right, though? Don't be. You're exactly right. Is that showing? I wish you would call me Lily. Getting back on track, you're saying Murasaki's theory is correct. The thing about Elmoloy Case Files that is absolutely fascinating to me is, I remember watching Glass Reflection's review of the anime and how he didn't like it because it presented itself as a mystery. But it, it to be honest, Elmoloy Case Files makes for a really shitty mystery story. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I agree full-heartedly with that. If you're looking for, like, you know, a good old Sherlockian mystery story that you can follow along with, perhaps even predict the outcome and put the pieces together, you cannot get that from Elmoloy. Because it's more of just, this is a cool way to see mages doing cool shit. That's much better way to describe the appeal of Elmoloy. You get to see more characters of the Clock Tower, more different mages, more mage culture, and learn things. It's better to think of it as a classroom anime than it is like a legitimate mystery. Because the only one who's allowed to play the mystery properly is Waver himself. Because he knows all this shit we don't. And they can pull out crazy Nasuverse logic all at the end. So basically... <laughs> You go through these stories, mysterious things happen. They introduce potential suspects and stuff like that. But in an all at the end, right towards the end, Waver's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you with the real truth. And he just spams this most ridiculous thing that deduction would have never otherwise been allowed to come up with. It's like, oh yeah, they used this to transform this person into that person. And then they killed that person and... They didn't know about the alignment of the stars at this time of night, and... It's like, no one's gonna be able to, f you know, keep up with all that. So if you go to El Malloy Case Files to try and figure out the mystery, it, it's really not entertaining there. You 
Yep. So, it's kind of funny how they structure it like a mystery, but that's really not its genre. Again, it, it's more like, let's take lessons from Waver, as we're in the middle of crazy action. And the mystery is just kind of an opportunity for him to teach us things as they go. What did you just join into? We're talking about El Malloy the Second case files. Um, getting back on track, literally. You're saying Murasaki's theory is correct? That's right. Rules come into effect whenever night falls. And I think Murasaki is exactly right about tonight's rules. I knew it. Furthermore, I think we're dealing with a specific kind of horror movie. A Hollywood B movie. I'm sorry, could I stop you there? I have some familiar, uh, familiarity with horror movies, but I've never heard of Hollywood or B movies before. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I should have explained what I meant. Alright, we should still have some time, so I'll try and elaborate. Do you think Katakawa has gone woke by following Western American progressive sensibilities? It all depends on what they produce. You know, if they say one thing, but then do another, you know? Fujiwara no Kaoruko poured over every kind of story I could find. And I don't just mean books. I also studied all kinds of films and TV series. That's where I learned that a staple genre of summer, summer entertainment is... Horror movies. Yes, exactly. There are a great many genres of film, and even more tropes and patterns that they tend to follow. And when I think back on the various horror films I watched, uh, uh, studied in Caldea's library, it's clear to me that Lord Phantom is behaving just like a slasher in a B-movie. So you're saying he's acting according to those conventions? Yes, that's exactly right, Lord Emia. Which is why we should split up. No! <laughs> you dumbass! Who will win? Gon and Kalua versus all of the Xenoblade 2 characters? I don't know who Gon and Kalua are. Is Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger going to become servants or something? That would be cool. Uh, why would you put B-movie here? Don't do that. We don't need no B-movie here. I know this may sound ridiculous, but I believe the rules I'm about to tell you apply virtually all, uh, to virtually all horror movies. The slasher will be invincible until the third act. The slasher will prefer to attack young people, especially couples. The slasher will never kill children. Really? The slasher is capable of all manner of impossible things. There are other rules besides those, and of course there are many films which do not conform to any such rules. But broadly speaking, I think it's safe to say many B-horror movies have those four rules in common. That would explain how Phantom could be so much stronger than most of the servants, let alone ordinary people. Yes, I think it would. As the real Lord Phantom is nowhere near so strong as we've seen, I, ex I expect his usual strength is a result of his becoming uh, a result of his having become a horror movie slasher. The same is true for his abnormal uh, durability as well. To put it simply, that Lord Phantom simply isn't capable of dying yet. I guess that's because there'd be no movie if he died at the beginning. He may be a terrifying monster, but it's also a very sad way to live. I wish there was something I could do for him, but even though I'm Yao Bikuni, I'm afraid I can't fight. Hey, don't worry about it. Every servant here knows their way around a battlefield. We'll find a way to resolve this as long as we keep looking. Heck, that's why we came here in the first place. So, Murasaki, do you think this door has any special significance? It's a bit hard to say, since there are so many exceptions. But one rule does come to mind. The slasher needs to be some kind of opportunity in order to break through a constructed barrier. What kind of opportunity? For example, one of the characters feels safe after putting up a barrier, and gets too close to the door. 
only for the slasher's arm to burst through it. That sort of thing. Aha, now I get it. That being said, we can't stay here forever. Eventually, the slasher will find another way inside. My guess is he'll wind up teleporting into the college, uh, cottage. Impossible, though, that is. Yes, I would agree. The slasher will almost certainly murder anyone who goes off on their own. There you go. So there's nothing we can do to fight back? I've been sensing powerful charms, or curses, if you will, all throughout this singularity. And they've only gotten stronger since night fell. Strong enough that I've been able to sense them acutely, even though I'm not a proper onmyoji. I wonder, maybe this curse is taking the concepts of our being hero, sorry, of us being servants, and overriding it with the concept of movie characters. Moriarty is banned from watching Saw. Fair enough. Do you want to play a game? If it is, what do we do? Assuming my hypothesis is correct. We should be able to repel the enemy by strengthening our concepts as servants. I can think of two ways we might be able to do that. One, we follow the movie's rules and reach the end of the film. Two, we go up against the movie's rules and cause the whole film to break down. Something tells me following the rules would be a very bad idea here. Definitely. I might not know as much about them as Murasaki, but I've seen a few horror films myself. And usually by the time the credits roll, there are one, maybe two characters left alive at most. On top of that, I don't think you'd be one of the survivors, Master. In fact, if you follow the movie's rules, I think you'd be probably the first one to die. What, am I black? Really? Uh-huh, I can tell a person's destiny by reading these convention, uh, conventions and auras, so to speak. You could say it's like being able to see the flow of fate itself. Hang on, isn't it normal for the protagonist of a movie to still be alive at the end? Generally it is, but horror movies often subvert that particular convention, so... That's right. The protagonist is even in more danger than these in these situations. It is true, isn't there like a complaint that black dudes always die first in horror movies? I don't know if that's actually true but that is something people have observed. Normally, I think it's usually, like, the chicks who, you know, hang out at the side of the beach or by the lakeside in their bikinis, and they're just ignorant and kind of bitchy, and then they go and get killed. That's usually the people who die first. Dead protagonist? That'd be a hell of a twist if you're Shyamalan. Um... <laughs> Do want Murasaki Shikibu? I don't care for her at all. Alright, then how exactly do we go about breaking down this movie we're in? Hmm. There are two ways. One, we face the slasher directly and survive till morning. If we do that, we should be able to defeat him. Why is that? From what I can tell, this movie's killer is designed to only last a single night. Now I see. So it really is like a traditional horror film, then. The killer's job is to show up at night and terrorize the hell out of the cast for a solid 90 minutes. So what's the second way? The second... is to use Lady Ilya as a decoy. Huh? Ah! Seriously? Ha! <laughs> I see, so it'd be using the movie's rules against it. Uh, huh? What do, you, what do you mean? I believe the very same rules that are magnifying Phantom's strength also render him unable to kill children. That's why he never went after Lady Ilya during our battle. The only thing is, well... That would be a cruel and cowardly method. I'm afraid it is also one I cannot endorse. I don't see any reasons not to use it. Ilya's a powerful servant. 
She's able to fight or withdraw when she has uh, when she has to, as any of us. Why isn't Code Geass on a lot of streaming platforms? Why would it need a rebroadcast? I don't know, man. Um, Code Geass, who does have the rights to that right now? I thought it was Funimation last I saw. They released the Blu-rays. So maybe it will be coming to Crunchyroll. You know, thanks to the merger. That doesn't mean we can just use her like some sort of pawn. I agree. I know it was my suggestion, but I wouldn't feel right about using her as a decoy. Me neither. Wait, wait, all of you, just hang on! Ilya? Lady Ilya! It's okay, I can do this. I can do this. I'm still Sarah's servant, after all. Dog. Yes, I suppose you are. You may be a child, but you are a servant first and foremost. It seems I was being overly protective of you. Oh, Kogias is on Netflix? Cool. Forgive me, Lady Iliasville. Of course! I've never seen something... Uh, I've never seen someone so handsome sparkle with pure virtue before. Well, Master, it's your decision. We'll do whatever you think is best. Yeah, I definitely said, uh, go for it, Elia. Because otherwise you gotta wait for the dumbass. Okay, I'll do my best. Well, Studio Sunrise in Japan, yes. I'm talking about, like, the Western license for it to be on streaming services. It'll be fine. I'm a servant too, after all. Okay, I'll give the signal, then open the door. From there, it'll be business as usual. Mm. You're stiff as a board, Elia. You sure you'll be okay? You're not scared, are you? Now, of course, I've already done these battles. I have to admit that because I needed to gather up enough story over several days to actually make it worth streaming. The legal shower, is that really what it's called? That's funny. You're not scared, are you? No! Okay, yes, but it's not what you think. I'm scared of what might happen if I mess up and ruin everything. Don't worry, if something goes wrong, me, Prince of Lanling, and Murasaki are all here to back you up. And don't forget, we've got a master who's seen more action than any army of mages right behind us. Just fight like you always do and you'll be fine. Thank you, Emiya. I feel much better now. Yep, Funimation merged with Crunchyroll, so a lot of their library is slowly being brought over to the service. Let's go! When was the last time we used Ilya as bait? I'm really sorry, Phantom, but I hope this will snap you out of it. Yeah! Oh, my claws! <laughs> I. Blah. Look, Sarah, it's morning. I'm so glad that's over with. You did great hanging in there. Thanks, I did my very best. It looks like... what the fuck? I didn't get a good glimpse of what that was. It looks like Lord Phantom is okay too. Oh, thank God, uh, goodness. It, oh, that was Phantom. It would seem our nightmarish... <laughs> Nightmarish night is at an end, then. Oh. It's Yume Ren. It'd be even better if the singularity had disappeared as well, but I guess that was just too much to hope for. 
At least the most pressing crisis is over now, so we can at least celebrate that. Hooray! Hmm, why do you got a little ghost hat on you? Hey, Kohai, I'm not quite sure how to tell you this, but... I died. <gasps> Say what? No! Do you do VA stuff? You sound like a pro. I mean, not officially, no. I have never been hired to do an official piece of voice work, though that would be dope. I would love that. Am I dreaming again? They killed Yume Ren! You bastard! Da da da. Da 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 da. Guess we won't know yet. Hey, we're back here. Huh? What's up, Master? Oksai! Hey, why the long face? Come on, cheer up. Say, how about a quick round of gambling before we go to fight that swimsuit swordmaster? Huh? 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 The hell do you think you're doing? Sean Alter? We already finished the draft, so how about we go swimming in the ocean today? <laughs> oh no! You took her away, you bitch! What are you doing to my welfares? You the government come to take away my welfare? Bird in hell! Come on, don't space out on me. I've still got plenty of errands for you to run. But hey, once you're done with those, we can all kick back and celebrate and start. Ew. What is wrong, Sarah? You look pale. And what are you? Oh, that, that, that looks like Kiara, if I'm guessing based on the arm. <laughs> How terribly adorable. Oh? I guess this is it, then. How very overprotective of you. I'll just leave a very, a very important hint here for you before I go, then. <laughs> what? I don't know that symbol! Am I in? Good, there you are. What in the world was that? Just a nasty little prank. This is the line between dreams and reality. Believe me, it wasn't easy getting here. At any rate, this latest singularity is a terrible fit for me. Or perhaps I should say it fits me too well. Regardless, I won't be able to help you anymore. This may be a minute singularity, but it's also the most twisted, demented place I've ever seen. Really? Focus on surviving. Collecting records will help you. Records of what? Of what happened in this place. This singularity has already spawned. There is no avoiding it now. But knowing you, you should still be able to prevent the worst case scenario. Beware your dreams. Do not succumb to fear. And... Damn, we're out of time. The interference is cropping up here sooner than I expected. Remember, the key word is fear. Don't do it. Just don't do it. This singularity is... Machina Fire! 
Wah, wah, wah. Do you think Z of the Recapture will be cool when it comes out? I don't know what Z of the Recapture really... We haven't seen, like, anything of it. That's not the mobile game, is it? Is it the presumed actual new season that we're supposed to be? Oh, it was another movie? Yeah. I'll be excited, for sure. I just think they're taking their sweet-ass time. What a weird dream. Oh. Maybe I'm more tired than I realized. Good morning, Master. Morning. Thank you again for all your help with that incident last night, or uh, earlier this morning. Breakfast is all ready, so I hope you'll come join us once you're dressed. You bet I will. Morning, Master. Good morning. Huh? Where's Yumei Ren? Still sulking in bed from the looks of it. Didn't she die, though? I don't know what happened, but it sounds like she really did die. Anyway, Prince of Lenling's up there consoling her now, so I'm sure she'll show her face sooner or later. You can't talk to the dead. What is your favorite Code Geass cover? I don't know what you mean by cover. What was that noise outside? I think I'll go take a look. Hungry? Would you prefer a Western-style breakfast or a Japanese-style one? Either it's the Code Geass mobile game, or it's some other mobile game doing a Code Geass crossover, but there's some really nice swimsuit art of Colin and uh, C2. And I think the chick who worked with the white-haired professor guy Japanese, please. You got it. May I interrupt for a moment? Oh, what's up, Murasaki? I'm not sure what happened. Perhaps the battle last night got them worked up. But it looks like the local demonic beasts are a bit restless. I believe I should be able to handle them myself, but... Don't be silly. We're not going to make you fight by yourself while we sit back and have breakfast. In fact, this should, make for, this should make for a good morning workout. It'll be like radio calisthenics. Sounds good. Ooh, ooh, I want to do radio calisthenics too. Uh, it was just an analogy. I don't think we actually get radio reception out here. All right, let's do this. Hey, hang on one minute, Emia. Huh? You're supposed to get a stamp card filled out after doing radio calisthenics, right? Where do we get one of those? Ask manager for one after we're done fighting. Yep, I think they should continue. They they left um, code Lelouch of the Resurrection on a cliffhanger right at the very end with like a post credit scene suggesting that there would be, you know, actually more. But even then, it's been years since even that film. It's like, dude... Seriously? All done. Oh man, I really worked up an appetite. Alright, let's head back to the cottage. Uh-oh, I think I forgot to make rice. You what? Emmy, uh... Ugh. How's bread and miso soup sound? I mean, I like both those things, but they don't go together, like, at all. Hmm, is something wrong, Master? Nah. Interesting, the Nagatoro's creator made Elia Dojins. I love that artist. But I don't care for Elia Dojins. I must have pushed my luck too far. But what is going on with this mountain? feels like there's something fundamentally contradictory at the heart of it. 
They use him for, like, so many random scenes in these summer events. My mind's starting to stagnate. This is bad. This is bad! I think I need to rest a little. Did you know the original Code Geass manga never had mechs? What? Really? What? I've never heard of that. They make a lot of lowly stuff. I like... Oh, oh wait, you said Nagatoro. Right. Welcome back. Oh, hey, you're up. And not in your ghosty ghost outfit. Hey, I can't lay around feeling sorry for myself all day. So I was just dreaming when you said you died yesterday? Nope, I was dead as a doornail. Oh well, I came back to life after a while, as usual. <laughs> I must say, I have no earthly idea how your spirit origin works. Though, actually, it was weird. That attack should have been enough to kill me. Or shouldn't have been enough to kill me. A little thing like an axe to the head isn't usually enough to kill me. But for some reason, this time it was. Good morning, everyone. That was quite the day we had yesterday, wasn't it? I'll say. So what's the plan for today? I spoke with Emia, and we decided to try venturing outside. Hmm. Is that so? Okay, I'm gonna go take a walk. What kind of ice cream, Connor? That does seem like a good plan. As a general rule of thumb, we should use the morning to recuperate and prepare, then begin our investigation proper at noon. Good morning, everyone! Um, excuse me, everyone, but could you all come outside? I think we may have something of an emergency. <gasps> Did you find a body? Do you see that? Or is it the ghostly apartments? It looks like another building, and it's much taller than the cottage. Was that building always here? I don't believe so, no. What do you think we should do, Sigurd? Is it a castle? No, a tower? No, not that either. It's more modern. Still, no matter what type of building it is, I'm certain we would remember something so distinctive. Got a minute? We just discovered a house over there that didn't exist yesterday either. Just popped up all of a sudden. We'd probably better look into it, huh? I think Emmy is going to investigate that one. That so? I see Red Mantle's still as hardworking as ever. B and J? Oh, Ben and Jerry's rain dough cookie dough twist. Interesting. Sounds good. Ben and Jerry's is pretty, you know, hearty ice cream. It's like, not the best for you, I guess, but it's like really yummy. It's one of those kind of things. Then again, I love Cold Stone ice cream, so I can't complain. That stuff's not good for you either. Oh, come to think of it, I wanted to talk to you, Sigurd. Something I can do for you? You know where those Valkyrie friends of yours got off to? Hmm. My beloved and I saw them last night, but I have yet to see them this morning. Got it. Um, did they say something to you? Whatever it was, I hope they weren't being too pushy about it. Nah, they just asked me to teach them some moves with the spear. And since I got some time to kill right now, I figured, why not? It's bloody lovely. <laughs> nice. Oh, I see. Thank you so much. It does sound like a really good, uh... Well, okay, why is it rain dough? How is that different than just cookie dough ice cream? I would be honored to have the Child of Light teach my sisters personally. I'll be sure to tell them you said yes. Would you? Thanks. Just let them know I'll be hanging out around here whenever they're ready. I will.
I think I'll have breakfast before I go see this new building. What will you do, Master? I'm thinking about going with Lady Yume Ren. haagen is overrated unless you're eating strawberry haagen out of the little cup and the wooden spoon in between your legs, just like Ryogi Shiki. That's the one time haagen is relevant. <laughs> because it's in an anime, goddammit. I'm such a loser. No, I'm very proud anime fan. Hmm, I can understand your concern, seeing as she's already died once. Alright, understood. She headed off towards the woods. You should still be able to catch up to her if you hustle. Got it. Thanks. It's got colored cookie dough and chocolate chips. Interesting. That sounds fun. Wait, the hell of a bias? What are you talking about? Sorry. Could you clarify what you're referring to? Oh, the ice cream. Well, that's not a... Yeah, that is... I guess that's a bias. But no, there's something fun. Whenever we watch that film of Kara no Kyokai and I know we're going to be watching it, I whip out the uh, haagen -Dazs. I go buy, like, a couple of them. Oh, it's you. What's up? You want me to join for some forest therapy? Or you want to join me for some forest therapy? Well, okay. Just don't like, expect it to be fun. That said, I don't eat any other haagen -Dazs. It's just that one flavor in a cup, in the context of Kata no Kyokai. <laughs> Otherwise, strawberry is not my favorite type of ice cream, for sure. Greek-made ice cream, then everything else will seem meh afterwards. Maybe. Ugh, don't be a creep. I'll have fun watching you. Oh, baby. Ugh, man, I'm still sleepy. Maybe my death hit me harder than I thought. Would it help if I gave you a shoulder rub? What's up with you? Yeah, okay, if you're willing, why not? Ah, that's it. That's the spot. You know, you're not half bad. Though, of course, you can't compare to that mysterious masseuse from the Enmate. Uh, <laughs> ah, forests are great, aren't they? Too bad this one's so cursy. Cursy? You know, curses, grudges, negative emotions, that kind of thing. I swear, you humans make such a huge impact on your environment, it's absurd. Word of advice, keep your hatred and jealousy and garbage like that to a minimum, all right? And whatever you do, don't make someone who looks up to you commit suicide by drinking poisoned wine. I still don't get how that just isn't plain murder. Don't worry, that's never gonna happen. Good, I hope not. But hey, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should never hate anyone, or that you should be some kind of saint or something. I mean, human history is pretty much made up entirely of that kind of stuff, right? So if that's the way it's always been, then it's okay, at least for now. Wow, you Lady Yume Ren, you have some pretty impressive insights sometimes. Hold it, what do you mean sometimes? I am always an incredible, insightful senpai. You're always sexy. <laughs> well, as much as I'd like to stay, I think I'd better be on my way. I'll always be with you as a best friend every time. That's nice. I don't know if you're talking to me specifically. That is quite specific, Bison. Didn't happen to one of your friends when he was with us. 
Oh, Python, yeah. Yep, that's how, uh, you know, Prince of Lanling got killed. Yeah, okay, later then. <sighs> I might be taking it a little too easy for a change. Oh, hello, Master. May I ask what you're doing here, just staring off into space? I see. Well, it has certainly been a lot of fun staying inside all morning playing video games. Perhaps we should try some activities that make better advantage of our being in the mountains. Like what? Which Godzilla Kaiju would you like to be friends with? I guess the strongest one so it won't kick my ass. We may be staying in a cottage now, but traditionally, mountains have been cut off from human com uh, communities. As such, out of the three essentials, clothing, food, and shelter, the latter two are an especially crucial part of living on one. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I'll take a look. You need to, like, hit me up on Discord or something to remind me after the stream. Well, I suppose those priorities may change if one were to somehow find oneself on a mountain stark naked. But since that's not the case for us, I think we should focus on securing food and shelter. First, we can chop down some trees. On second thought, that may be somewhat difficult. Let us start by making a roof out of branches instead. What, you're not a very good lumberjack? Since it's not very cold out here right now, being summer and all, a simple, uh, a simple lean-to should suffice for our shel survival, bleh, survival shelter needs. Of course, in other environments, other kinds of shelter are needed to provide more protection from the elements. There is a world of difference between, say, the jungle and the desert, after all, both in terms of available resources and safety. Fortunately for us, this mountain is fairly standard as far as survival environments go, so the shelter we need here should be relatively easy to make. If we were in the desert, we would have to find some way to escape the heat of the sun's rays. I'm told that digging a hole in the ground and crawling into it is a very good way to do that. At any rate, while we would normally ask the campground manager before building a new shelter on the property, given that this is an emergency and there's no one around to ask us anyway, I think we shall be in the clear, so to speak. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Probably. Right. Well, well. What y'all up to over here? Sure looks like you're all having fun. You know, I got some kind, some time to kill in case y'all want to help. Or, in this case, in case y'all want some help. Damn it. <laughs> Billy the Kid. Hmm, you are a thief, are you not? I prefer the term outlaw, if you don't mind me saying so. Whatever you choose to call yourself, you are still resolutely a criminal. But I suppose it is all right. Hey, thanks. Mighty kind of you. I doubt Chin Liang you'd be half as merciful if she were in your shoes. <laughs> oh, I am not so sure. I suspect she may be more she may be more willing to compromise than I am. At any rate, let's begin building our new shelter. Yeehaw! Yee-haw. While a lean-to is a good start, we'll still need proper walls to keep out the wind. No matter how warm an environment may seem during the day, it can still become deathly chill in an instant at night. So we'll begin by be ga uh, gathering the fallen leaves and using them in conjunction with branches to build our shelter's frame. Man, this sure takes me back. This is the exact type of shelter me and my fellow outlaws used to make back in the day. We must also be careful to leave enough space in our shelter for proper ventilation. 
Wilderness survival is, in fact, at its heart, about one's ingenuity in working with what one has and can find. A good, sh a good shelter should meet several conditions. What do you think the upcoming Tomo-chan is a girl anime adaptation? Cute tomboy girl anime voiced by Rei Takahashi. Uh, Tomo-chan? I don't know. Let me look that up. Oh, someone pointed that out to me. Well, um, I don't know when it comes out, but I'll probably watch it. It looks cute. I do like me some tomboys. So... For example, it must have good ventilation, dry floors, and must not pose a danger if it should fall apart. This should be doable if we're able to get a little creative with a roof and frame. Right, Yar? For example, in modern days, you might just happen to have yourself a tarp even when you're out on a mountain. And that tarp will be a perfect roof for keeping out the wind and rain and such. Yes, exactly. This is all good stuff. Thanks for teaching me. Not at all, it is my pleasure. Alright, now that our shelter is finished, let us rest inside for a bit and enjoy some friendly conversation. Well then, I got a little something for y'all. Assuming, of course, you like the harmonica music. If you got any requests, I'm happy to hear them. Can't promise I'll be able to play them, but I'll do my darndest. Senpai, do you enjoy your morning out? I see, I see. So you did forest therapy with Yume Ren and built a shelter with Tomoe. That sounds like a wonderful outdoor experience. I wish I could have joined you. Perhaps you can do so tomorrow. For the time being, we have another objective to fulfill. I spent the whole morning fortifying the cottage's defenses. With the help from Thrude, Hildur, and Ortlinda. Heh. <laughs> I knew you would have everything well in hand, my beloved. As for me, I went over to that new building to observe it from a closer, though still safe distance. I did not see anything suspicious. Indeed, I saw no sign whatsoever of human presence. But there is no denying the strange and unusual air about it. <laughs> well, of course there'd be something strange about an apartment building way up in the mountains like this. So it's an apartment building, huh? I think I can show you the way there, so I'll go with you. What do you mean? My parental guardian lives in that building. Though I couldn't go back there yesterday, since I couldn't see it. You have a parental guardian? I do now. I met him after I was summoned here as a servant. Even though I don't have any memories of my human self, or of being Yao Bikuni. He said no child should be out in the mountains alone. And that I should come with him if I had nowhere else to go, since he had plenty of rooms to spare. He sort of just declared himself my guardian, even though I never asked. Hmm... But it would have been too much trouble for to turn him down, so I took him up on his offer and stayed there for a while. I think today you'd call it a safe house, maybe? I know for sure as that room he gave me was a real dump. I see. So you'd never met this person before? No, as far as I know, I've never seen him in my life. 
As I keep telling you, I don't remember anything from my old lives whatsoever. Speaking purely from a risk assessment factor, I must ask, are you sure you can trust this man? No, on second thought, I should probably first ask if he's human or servant. Mm, I can't say for sure one way or the other. He's very sickly and delicate. He doesn't seem like he could do any fighting. So I can't really imagine he's a servant. But neither can I imagine a local living in such a decrepit ruin of a building. Hmm, now that I think about it, what is he anyway? Still, I'm positive he's not dangerous. Though I don't know if you can trust him. I'm not entirely sure what to make of her assessment. In my experience, those who are most open and straightforward are also the ones you can most reliably trust. For example, an earnest and fortright, fortright warrior who shines as brightly as the morning sun. <laughs> no, my guardian is pretty much the opposite of that. I don't think that crusty eccentric will trust you, though. At least as long as I'm with you. Or you do think. Yeah. Especially since I cleaned up all the trash in the rooms, made him coffee, and cooked him real meals. Sure he may never Sure he may never have thanked me, little prick. But I just know for sure that he's grateful. I guess we may not be able to say much about this guardian figure until we meet him for ourselves. Still, this doesn't change the fact that there's now a strange new apartment building we should probably investigate. What would you like to do, Master? Ikazo! Understood. Then let's get going. <laughs> I'll lead the way, okay? <sighs> the fog is starting to get really dummy thick. The clap of its ass cheeks is alerting all the monsters. Yes, it is. We could easily end up lost if we're not careful. I'm using runes to record our route, so we shouldn't have any problem getting back to the cottage. But we should still keep our guard up, as there's no telling what else may happen. I should have known you would also be beautiful when you're being wary, beloved. Cut it out, beloved! <laughs> it's a good thing I have guts, or I would have been dead right there. Dude. Um, Mashu, is it okay for her to hurt him like that? Oh, yes. Sigurd knows that just how, uh, Sigurd knows that's just how Brynhild shows her love. And he's okay with that, so... Oh, I see. So that's love, huh? It is a rather unusual and extreme way of demonstrating affection, but yes. Now I understand. You can't have love without pain. I learned something today. Hey, I think I see something. Did the Castoria goes rolls go? Yeah, they did great. I got a Castoria and I'm very happy. Is that the place? Damn, they must have cut every corner they could in building it. It does seem a little bit eh, behind on its upkeep. I'll say. It looks like it's been outright abandoned. Is that really where your guardian lives? I know it's hard to believe. I don't understand it either. He said that while the service might be non-existent, at least there were plenty of rooms to go around. And he likes staying in different rooms each day, depending on what kind of mood he's in. So even though I don't know where he is right now, we might have to check every room until we find him. Oh, so even I don't, yeah. That's alright. We came here hoping to find a clue about how to resolve our predicament. So we'll need to investigate all of this building's rooms anyway, no matter how troublesome that may prove. I guess you're right. We may as well start on the first floor and check every nook and cranny from there. Ugh, I hate that kind of tedious work. Well, complaining about it will not make it any less tedious. Come, we have work to do. Not even the corridors get much sunlight, do they? What a gloomy building. Hmm. 
Okay, this room first. I hope you're all ready for whatever may be inside. Why are you so happy about this? <sighs> Was it that obvious? Well, you see, this building happens to look exactly like one from our horror game I played a while ago. Resident Evil. It was just... I was just remembering the tension and excitement I felt before opening a new door in that game. Nothing compares to the tension of knowing you must press on, even as you're dangerously low on resources. So, you're excited at the prospect of tediously going through every damn room in this building? Yes, I am! The hunt for items you need is one of the best parts of these sorts of games. You just loot the place, why don't you? People get easy trigger nowadays. Yeah, I say I like that about you and embrace it as fan service and video games. Yes. Do we know who founded arcade version of Caldea? Apparently, arcade Caldea founders were completely different from the ones we know. Ah, is that true? I don't know that. Worrying about such things, such as having enough healing items, stocking up on ammo, and finding the items needed to proceed to the next event. are all part of the unique mixture of unease and anticipation that make the genre so exciting. Though, of course... You find the zombies! That's not a zombie. It is exa... It is exciting precisely because there could be genuine dangers waiting for you. I guess we're not out of the ghost-busting woods yet. Let's take care of them! Who are you gonna call? Do you watch the new Resident Evil show? I heard it sucked, but no, I don't watch it, because... How many times have they done stuff with Resident Evil and I just don't have the time for that? Ain't got no time for that, no. Sorry, I'm trying to put on a jacket, which is why my avatar is freaking out. There we go. Despite it being nice and warm outside, Adi Chan's got the AC up so much that I'm a little chilly. So far, there have been nothing but ghosts inside every room we've checked. Are you certain your guardian is here, Lily? Yes, I'm certain. He says the ghosts have never harmed him, and they at least let him work in peace, unlike the living. Apparently, he originally came here to stay in the hotel, but decided on this apartment building instead. So there's a hotel nearby as well? Hmm. He's very sensitive to what other people do around him, so he probably avoided the hotel on purpose. Well, there certainly doesn't seem to be any, or don't seem to be any other people in this building. So I suppose I can see sense in that. Still, with this many enemies, it's going to take some time to reach every room. Hmm, Master, I suggest we split up to cover more ground. Dumbass, we shouldn't do that. If one of us should come across a clue, or this guardian figure, that person can let everyone else know. Fortunately, this place is so quiet that we need only raise our voices a bit to communicate. Um, isn't it dangerous for us to all go off? Sorry. Blech. Isn't it dangerous for all of us to go off on our own? Hmm, good point. We should probably stick to no more than two groups. We certainly shouldn't risk reducing our forces on Master's side too much. In that case, I think it might be best if I and one more from the other group uh, form the other group since I am the one who suggested this. Then I'll go with you, Sigurd. Of course, beloved. That's exactly what I had in mind. I trust you'll be alright with that, Master. No objections here. Just don't go fucking in the apartment building. They're so old you might just get tetanus. First, let us agree on a time and place to meet in case something unexpected should happen. Alright. That should do it. Then from here on, we'll be going our separate ways. Good luck. 
Um, excuse me. I couldn't speak up earlier since you lovebirds never gave me the chance. But I don't think going off on your own right now is a very good idea. Fuck! I guess I was too late. Damn it. You need not worry. Lord Sigurd is a world-famous dragon slayer. And Lady Brynhild is a great Valkyrie. Between the two of them, I doubt there are any monsters or spirits who would stand a chance. Or is there something else that worries you? Uh-oh. Did we forget to save or something? No, it saves automatically, so we should be fine there. Because it's reality, dude. Anyway, if they end up running into trouble, well, maybe that'll be interesting too. What's the least favorite Garden of Sinner movie? Hmm. Overlooking View is kind of one of the more boring ones, I'll admit. Um, I still like it, but I, I think I guess I would probably agree with you. Either that or the fairy one, but that one's kind of cute in its own right. Beloved. Yes? If you're wondering about the ghosts, I believe we already defeated them all. Is there something wrong, my beloved? Not at all. I was just thinking how nice it is to be alone together in a quiet place like this. <gasps> it really is, isn't it? It's almost like looking up at the stars in the sky in a world where there's no one else but you and I. I need no starry sky, beloved. I could gaze into your amethyst eyes all day and night. Is more of what I had in mind. I see. I suppose you do have a point there. You probably already know this, Master. But such steamy scenes are quite common in B-horror films. Just before the lovebirds are brutally murdered. I don't know if we have to worry about that. It's still the middle of the day, after all. Hmm. I'm not sure if the day-night rules apply to that sort of situation. The audience's anger might be strong enough to result in the couple being murdered anyway. I didn't bring it up earlier because I thought it was common sense and didn't bear mentioning. Oh, now that you mention it, I guess that is a really common time for the killer to show up in a movie like that. Whoa! Sings! Then aren't they really in danger? <laughs> no, no fear. No, no fear. Well, it's time to meet and share our findings. Well, we're at a place we chose, but... Or at the place we chose. Yeah, no sign of Sigurd or Brynhildr. What the hell's their problem? Who the hell do they think they are? They think I wouldn't want to spend time alone with Lord Xiang Yu in a quiet place like this? Of course I would. You probably could find a better place than this, though. The sheer gall. Unbelievable. Um, that's not what we're worried about, you may Ren. The worst we the worst case scenario would be that they Well, the only thing we could do now, uh is go looking for them ourselves. But we should also leave a note for them here in case they arrive after we leave. Okay there, now come on. We still have to fill the rest of the map. She's a gamer, alright. Gotta fill them maps. <gasps> I think that just means they had sex. She, like, lopped off his wiener or something. Ah! They're all covered in blood! Yep, they're totally dead. You can tell from my own recent brush with it. Uh, uh, uh. This is terrible. What happened in here, Brynhildr? Uh, I... I... I guess the two of them going off on their own really did bring the killer down on them. Oh, It just goes to show that even things with only a 1% chance of happening can and do still happen. However, I am still alive! Nothing to worry about here. Nothing to see here! 
He looks like a madman. You're alive! Why? How? Oh, it's a good thing I have guts. Alright, I've died he then and here. Oh, Sigurd, Sigurd, thank goodness. What in the world happened in here? Did the enemy attack you? I don't know. I don't have... I do have the impression that something happened here, but I have no recollection of what. Whatever it was, I'm sure it couldn't have been serious. After all, I'm still alive. So please, pay no on to the fact that I'm wiping blood off of my beloved's hands even as I speak. This certainly isn't an effort to conceal evidence or anything like that. <laughs> as they say, there is nothing to see here. From all the blood on that Valkyrie chick's hands, it looks like she stabbed him, so... Wouldn't that make her the would-be killer? Eh, whatever. Besides, I get the feeling this happens all the time with them. Oh, Sigurd, I... As long as you're safe, there's nothing else in this world I need. Would you lot keep it down? You're irritating the shit out of me. Cripes, you must be bored out of your skulls to come make this much noise in a shit all like this. If you just want to be loud, you should go to the ocean. And when I say ocean, I don't mean the beach. I mean, you should go listen to waves and make, uh, and make assess... What? Oh, and make asses of yourselves at the edge of a nice steep cliff. So that when you fall off, the world will be rid of you. Damn, dude. <coughs> I have a feeling I know who this is. It'll be the thrill of your tart, uh, tragically shortened lives. But don't take my word for it. Hell, if you live to tell the tale, I might even listen. Wow, I've never been cursed out so eloquently before. That sounded like it came from the next room over. So that's where he was. Come on, everyone. Let's head to the next room over. That was my guardian just now. Oh, assuming Sigurd and Brynhildr are okay, of course. Are you? Of course. Never better. Come, Brynhild. Let's be on our way. Uh-oh. Are you a little unsteady on your feet? Here, you can lean on me. Don't be shy. Wait, you mustn't. <gasps> oh, for, can you at least wait until another... Till you get to another room? I'm still having to make do without Lord Xiang Yu here, you know. Get a room, you two! Uh, hi there? Of course. Hey, it's an adult form. I can't believe you just barged in like you own the place. You lot locals or something? At first I thought you might be a bunch of bikers, but I guess you're actually just thieves. Well, if you came here looking for valuables to steal, I'm afraid you're out of luck. All I've got are reams of manuscript paper and notes, the kind you can find for pennies just about anywhere. Of course, if you still want them that badly, I'm willing to let them go for well above market value. I've never seen this guy before, but he seems familiar somehow. <clears throat> I'm home. Is anyone in need of assistance? So they're friends of yours. Haven't I told you not to bring trouble back with you, Lily? They really looked like they needed help, so I couldn't resist. But never mind that. I can't believe you made such a huge mess again. I swear, you really are hopeless. Why bother? The only good thing about staying is in, an in a decrepit old building like this is you don't have to clean it. If one groom gets too messy, I can just move to another. I've always been good at making studies. Besides, I don't recall asking you to look after me. If you manage to find some new guardians, you go right ahead and play with them from now on. I can't do that. I've already started playing, uh, paying you back for your help. So I'm going to stay here and be your secretary until your manuscript is done, whether you like it or not. 
I guess just accepting the payment was too much to hope for. So, fine, whatever. With the story with the rest of you. I have no intention of getting involved in whatever it is you're up to here, but I am somewhat curious about your backgrounds. Whatever the topic, information is always valuable, so I can at least hear what you have to say. Well... Caldea, huh? And this singularity place in the strange land we're now in, is it? Is the strange land we're now in, isn't it? Have you watched Dead Man Wonderland yet? Nope, I haven't had a chance. I haven't had a chance. When I have a gap in time, I'll, I'll focus on it. I've never heard of anything called Caldea before, and yet, oddly enough, it does sound familiar. Maybe I'm actually a servant from there, too. But unfortunately... I can't say for sure one way or the other as I have no memories of anything from before I came here. I've also made it a point not to trust or work with anyone else, just as a way to protect myself. I'm sure I'll go back to my old self once you, really, uh, once you erase this singularity. Whoops. Oh, and take your time with that. You can never have too much vacation time, after all. As for me, I have no intention whatsoever of working as a servant. So you can just call me Busy Author. Wow, he so hasn't... He's, he hasn't so much as moved or glanced up from his desk even once. There you go. Now you know what a crusty, cantankerous man he is. Still... He was doing mental fieldwork and such before all of you showed up, and I saw him investigating the land around here on his own. So he might be able to help you all out somehow. Taking off my coat again. There we go. Not a coat, really, but a, a robe. I already told you I'm not helping anyone. If I help you, I'll make myself a target for whoever's opposing you. I don't get to go on vacation very often, so I'd prefer to spend it in peace. Right now, I just want to finish this damn assignment as soon as possible, and go relax at the lodge by the lake. By using the magical energy I gave you as a reward, right? My guardian here likes to talk the, uh, talk tough, but his spirit origin is laughably weak. So I shared some of my magical energy with him just to make sure he didn't end up dying to one of those ghosts. She practically forced it on me after saying she couldn't bear to see someone in need of assistance. I am no charity case. I believe in fair work for fair pay. That's why I'm here toiling away at this damn manuscript. I think I see. I'm still not entirely sure I understand. Oh, don't worry. It's a simple case of he scratches my back, I scratch his. By the way, how much progress have you made since I was last here? It's been two full days. Surely you must have gotten somewhere, right? Sarah, I've changed my mind. I'm going to help you, though only a little. Amnesia or not, I'm still a servant. I'm happy to prioritize restoring humanity above everything else. Adult Hans is pretty cool looking. I have a good idea what's going on here. Now thanks to everything you told me. And my author's intuition is telling me you should investigate any new places you discover. I don't know how much about movies, but they do have scripts like any other story, right? Then the economy of storytelling says that every place in a movie must have some significance to it. This world we're in now isn't some kind of random backstory for stories of ordinary lives. Or background for stories of ordinary lives. 
It's been created specifically to act as a breeding ground for drama, right? So don't take anything for granted, even things that seem commonplace or insignificant. Those are the sorts of things that'll be used to resolve. That is, build tension for the final act of the story. Aside from that, there's also this apartment building. You still haven't finished investigating every room on here, right? Then do that. And take Little Miss Deadline there with you. And don't come back for at least five days. That'll give me just enough time to procrastinate and then throw something together on day five. Hang on, what did you just call me? That sounded rude. All right, there is one thing I must ask of you, Lord, uh, Arthur, uh, author, sorry. Would you happen to know why we weren't able to see this apartment building until yesterday? What? You couldn't? Hmm. Maybe the building's owner had something to do with it. I certainly didn't. Then again, maybe it would be more accurate to say I wasn't the target. The fact that your organization is being attacked by abnormalities like that shows that something among you is... Someone among you is... A traitor! Never mind. It would definitely be overstepping to say anything more. I'm getting back to work. Oh, but I do need a pick-me-up first. Lily, as it turns out, I'm very much in need of assistance. I'd like a meal as an additional reward. Sorry. I held the button down, damn it. At I'd like at least a little satisfaction before I get back to the arduous toil that is writing. Some freshly steamed fish would hit the spot. No, on second thought, this is a resort, isn't it? Steak, then. A nice, juicy filet mignon. Not that I can tell the cuts of beef apart. <laughs> Well, I usually enjoy helping people in need of assistance. I'd be just as happy as pretending this man doesn't even exist. Hmm, what do you think, Master? Let's split into two groups again and keep investigating. So you want us to keep exploring this building and to investigate that house that mysteriously appeared? No, when you hold down the button, or you hold the tap, it will start speeding through the text, and unfortunately I... I did that in a lapse of concentration. See you, oh yeah. Understood. We'll split up again as before. Would anyone like to join Brynhild and I while we explore the house? Oh, um, I can go along with you. Thanks, Mashu. Keep an eye on them, will you? No hanky-panky under Mashu's watch. Then, Master, myself, and Lady Yume Ren will continue exploring this building. I'll go with you, too. Just give me a quick moment to finish up here, please. Aren't you going to stay with Busy Author? No, that's okay. I kind of shaped and colored some canned chicken so it looks more or less like steak. Ah! That should be enough to get him to focus on his writing for a while. Catch you later, Jens. Yes, I love Mashu's new swimsuit. He gets about twice as foul-mouthed whenever he's writing, so it's best to leave him alone anyway. But I can't leave him alone too long or he'll end up starving, so I'll have to come back and check on him once in a while. I see. 
You two are a lot like parent and child then, aren't you? Look, that's not how a parent should be to their child. No. Nuh-uh. No siree. I do love people in need of assistance, but that doesn't mean I want to become his full-time maid. <laughs> I've never had steak before, but I guess it's not all it's cracked up to be. <clears throat> anyway, Lily, can you go with these people if you want? Just be careful you don't get kidnapped. You're still innocent for about a lot of things in this world, so you need to watch out that you don't end up falling with a bad crowd. Nobody asked you, Mr. Sourpuss. If I were you, I'd be more worried about going feral without me here to look after you. Remember, if I see you trying to jump out of a room without any clothes on again, I will call the cops. What? What? Oh, while I'm at it, I also changed your toothbrush and washed your sheets. Don't forget to put the ladder back on yourself, okay? Of course, I can get fine on my own if I have to. Sarah, was it? I'm counting on you to take care of Lily for me. She's still too young to know right from wrong, so make sure she stays on the straight and narrow. <laughs> Maybe I don't know right from wrong, but I can still recognize a hopeless masochistic pig when I see one. What? Oh, nothing. Okay, Mr. Sourpuss, make sure you keep working. I'll come back to check on you once I've taken care of things here. Alright, let's go pay that house a visit. You be careful too, Master. Oh, and... Say what? Never mind, I'm sure I'm just imagining things. Okay, Master, see you later! I wonder what's going on with Mahashu. Who knows? They do say the heart is as unpredictable as the autumn sky. Though, of course, it's summer now. Alright, it's time to get started. We still need to explore every inch of this apartment building. This should be fun. It'll be like exploring every side path in a dungeon crawler. Whatever you say. Come on, let's go. Personally, I think this feels more like a Shinsengumi raid than a crawling through a dungeon. <laughs> oh, Drat. Even though she seems to be from the modern world. I do not think she understood my reference. We keep going from room to room in a seemingly endless chain. Most of them are empty, save for a faint smell of something rotten. Nope, nothing here. I do see signs that people once lived here, but they must be from at least 30 years ago. It's as though time itself came to a halt here. All except for the fact that there are spooky ghosts! That one of the dead spirits here is much tougher than it should be. That's right, I just took a quick look at it, and I think its grudge is at least 500 years old. We have to help it move on. I don't think it's in need of assistance so much as it's just in pain. Alright, let's kick its ass and be done with it. The ghost of Bombance! God, these events are so long. So much story! <clears throat> While dead souls and nursing grudges did show up from time to time, the servants were always quick to deal with them. But no matter where they looked, there was no sign of anything that could help bring the singularity to an end. But there were still other things to be found, though it wasn't a record of the past so much as the past itself. It was the sound of rancor and confusion filling the air, asking only one question. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> this journal is written with characters from multiple different languages. I cannot determine what it's saying. Perhaps it is a kind of code? 
That would explain why it's written like this. But it does not give us any leads. Let me see that. I can read this. You're right, it's code written in a mixture of old Chinese and Japanese. Oh, wow. Here, Tomoe, I'll teach you the trick so you can read it too. Understood. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay, so first... I just finished reading the journal, Master. Hmm, where to begin? An unbroken string of memories begins to split apart. Oh, no! It seems this mountain was once called... Wow. Um... It seems this mountain was once called the Pile of Feces. This village has been around for a very long time, or at least since well before my own lifetime. Damn! Looks to be about 2,000 years or so old. 2,000? It's over 1,000! Excuse me, Lady Rume Ren, but how do you read this name? Beats me. Those characters don't make any sense there. That's probably someone important, but whoever wrote this changed some details so they couldn't be identified. Hmm, I see. There seems to be something strange about this person's writings. Strange how? The descriptions they give off of various people are contradictory. For example, these passages here... Oh, did the power just go out? I certainly hold, hell, uh, heard someone going tippity tappity tippity tappity. Who done it? Who done it? Did they steal the book? Did they steal the book? Well, the room is all broken up now. Huh? Is it nighttime already? But the sun couldn't possibly have set so quickly. A demonic creature has appeared, so it's night now. So this is another of the rules. Sorry, Evan. Sorry, everyone, it looks like it's here now. What's here? Oh, I thought you knew. A decrepit old apartment building. Empty rooms, stagnant air. Sealed off spaces, and the malice accompanying them. It's a scary story that's told all throughout the world. The haunted apartment building. Die, have you seen the trailer for the upcoming Shangri-La Frontier? No. I don't know about that, man. Never heard of it. This is quite the pickle, huh, Master? What are you gonna do? What else? We pound the snot out of it until... Would you settle down already, Tomoe? I'm getting sick of hearing you stomping around. I didn't move a muscle! I didn't so much as budge either, of course. Was that you then, Master? It wasn't, was it? Definitely was not me. Then who? Why? It was me! Ah! Bloody hands! Hey, Kiyohime. <laughs> Why did you run from me? Uh, from me, dear Anjin. Oh shit. Kyo, who Uh, alright, water time. Sorry. I'm making too many dumb mistakes. I need more water. Kiyohime, are you alright? Oh no, I'm not running at all. Not when there are so many Anjins here. That's the guy you killed! Oh my. Ah, Anshin, Anshin, Anshin! I'll never chase you again. I'll never hate you again either. You and I can just live out our days here and forever. K Kiyohime! 
you're burning up in the literal sense of the word. Oh my, whatever are you saying, dear Anjin? This is just a paper-covered lantern. It helps me wake up the toasty rays of the morning sun. Oh, so she's literally cold-blooded. She thinks I'm Anjin too? This is bad. It seems we'll just have to do what's best to settle her down. So kick her ass! Right? Of course! I'll help you. It would be a big problem for me and my guardian if she were to burn down this whole building. Come on, Master, you help too. Okay, let's go. Huh? What was I just doing? Oh my. What are all you doing here? Thank goodness, she's come back to her senses. Well, you know, as much as a berserker can. Oh wait, she is a lancer now, yes? At any rate, what in the world happened? Hmm, what do you mean? I'm afraid I have no memory at all of whatever I was just doing. Setting that aside for the moment, excuse me, Kiyohime. Yes, that's me. What can I do for you, oh small and virtuous one? One, two, three. <laughs> did you just kill her? What did you just do? What did you just do? I hypnotized her. It's a good thing she was so susceptible to it. I'll take her to a room where she can rest. Will you give Corpse Party Games a chance? They are not on my priority list at all at the moment. <clears throat> Did we skip Kiyohime getting bonked? They kind of... What do you mean by that? I don't think I've skipped anything. There are still several things I would like to ask her. Um, it doesn't seem like she remembers anything. I see. But hey, at least we know this mountain's name now. Isn't that something? I guess finding out who's behind all this was too much to hope for. What's my favorite summer event? I'm still quite partial to the first one. I like that. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no rush. These sorts of things are best taken one step at a time, just like virtue. There are so many more moving experiences ahead of us as we go. It's a lot like playing hard to get. Well, I'm pretty wiped after all that fighting. How are you holding up? Oh, I'm fine. That's so. Damn. We've spent so much time fighting that it's actually nighttime now. Let's get back to the cottage before anything else tries to jump us. Sounds good to me. Part four of the event. Yes, it is the part where we continue the story. Ugh, I'm friggin' exhausted. Yesterday sure was a long ass day. Well, we now know that dying doesn't seem to have affected my stats. So at least that's something. Normally, I'd encourage us to push on with the investigation, but given everything that just happened yesterday, I can understand how exhausted you must feel. Why don't we save the investigation for the afternoon and use the morning to rest and recuperate, Master? Sounds like a plan! <laughs> I agree, I'm sure you're very tired as well, Master. You most certainly deserve a rest. Alright then, that's all for now. Enjoy your morning, everyone. What are you gonna do, Sarah? Wanna play, Ilya? Sure, this is great! We're gonna have so much fun together! So, what should we play? We could play in the water, or go for a walk. Hmm... Three, two, one... Hey, quit counting down, Ruby! You're stressing me out! It's okay, take your time. Take my time, huh? Well, in that case... 
how about a walk in the woods? I've heard there's some kind of extract or component or something that's really good for you. You're thinking of Phyton sides. I don't know if you say that right. Never heard that word before. See you later, Connor! They come from tree trunks and leaves, and they're supposed to have a wonderfully refreshing scent. That's it! Okay then, Woods, here we come! Oh wow, you can hear the cicadas everywhere here! Higurashi <laughs> no! As long as nobody's got a baseball bat! Um... Those are... Crypto Timpana Facialis Cicadas. Oh wow, I can't believe you knew that! You're so smart, Sarah! Whoa, I can't believe you could tell that species... Uh, who that species were just by the sound they make. What an astonishing achievement! Oh, come on, it's not that impressive. Anyway, this, uh... Phytonicide stuff really does smell good, doesn't it? It feels like it's cleansing my whole body. It does, doesn't it? Oh no, they're back! It'd be even better... If the cicadas would just keep it down a little. <gasps> Abby! 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 Something wrong, Sarah? Hmm. You saw a mysterious-looking girl out here in the woods. I wonder if she's a new servant. Can you make anything out about her, Ruby? Any luck with getting Xenoblade Chronicles Three die? Of course. Yep, yep, yep. I ordered the special edition through a bunch of nightmares through Nintendo. Now it's all up to them to send the game, and in my ideal world, the game would ship and it would arrive for me um, on release day. But we can't trust Nintendo, and they only gave you one shipping option, so we're all in the same boat there. Wah, wah. Abby, 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 Abigail Williams is hiding around the corner. Well, I can usually detect most servants and servant-like beings. My sensors don't seem to work very well in these woods. Can you rate 1 to 10 how much you want Summer Tomoe? Um, maybe a 7? I think a 7. I did get the Collector's Edition. I did. It was a long story. But it looked like all hope was lost. It looked as if Nintendo was running out, like they sold out of the stock. That's what it seemed like, but that was... Turns out it wasn't actually true. Just out of curiosity, do we know how old Melia is in Xenoblade Chronicles 3? We know it's been centuries or decades, at least from the time we have seen her. No, no idea. Ilya, do you like awesome adult her or cute youthful her and what kind of types and games do you play? What adult Ilya are you even referring to? We don't have an adult Ilya. We have Iris Feel. Yeah, I have no idea how many years have happened since either of the Xenoblades or whatnot for number three. Why is that? Geronimo said it's because they're contaminated with a fairly strong curse. C -c contaminated So we've been basking in cursed woods this whole time? Hey, we're not servants for nothing. Sarah isn't. Let's be honest, if we were actually in a horror movie right now, she was probably doomed the moment she set foot in this cursed land. You had to work during those pre-orders? Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, I don't blame you at all. It sucks. Like, I'm in a privileged position where I was able to do that. And even I got fucked over that bad. So it's extra frustrating for people who didn't have that chance. Are 
Are you okay, Sarah? Are you feeling weird or anything? Nope. Nah, Jobs. Oh, I love Xenoblade. I'm gonna stream the hell out of that. I hope all of the, uh... Summer event can be, um, done by then. Whew. We may be here to repair a singularity, Sarah, but we're still on summer vacation. So I hope yours turns out to be a good one. Actually, I say, I, well, I really want to stream all of Xenoblade Chronicles 3, but that's going to depend on you guys. If I'm not getting good views, it ain't going to happen. All right, now that we're all rested up, let's head back to investigating that mysterious house. I'd want viewers about at least on the par we've got right here for FGO, so like 97 people here, yeah. What all types of games you like? I like all types of games. It depends. I'm probably more about the art and the aesthetic of the game than I am necessarily just the gameplay itself. Because I can enjoy a good old puzzle game if it's something like Catherine. I can enjoy a fighting game if I like the roster. You know, that kind of thing. Xeno 3 is fucking long and wild. So we hear, right? We've heard that, but you don't know that for sure, because you didn't play it yet. Hang on, one thing I've got to do first. Hmm? Is going to be good to screen? I don't know what you mean by that. Like, is it copyright safe? I don't know, the first and second games were. I swear, why do I have to investigate the cottage in this condition? You may Ren, would you please not leave things on the floor once you're done examining them? If I may, my lady, I would also ask that you refrain from taking every opportunity to remind us that you do not want to be here. Ah, I know, I know. So, we're looking for records, like journals and documents, right? There was nothing like that on any of the shelves. All I could find were some old bestsellers and magazines. How about you, Lady Murasaki? There certainly don't seem to be any rare books or grimoires to be found around here. If there were, I'm sure they would have reacted when I made the Bounded Field. Huh? What is that? It looks like a road sign. You never played Catherine? It's a good game. Well, Ilya's mom is... She has an adult body, but she ages really fast. The paint is so faded that it's hard to make out what it actually could have been. What about those third-person FPS games? Do you like those or like other RPG FPS games? I could enjoy a third-person... Well, you can't call it third-person FPS. You just call it a third-person shooter. But yeah, um... I don't mind them as a gameplay style. I really liked Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash. But I wish that game had more features, more content, had better, smarter AI. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I can't tell if it looks familiar or not. I think I've seen something like it somewhere, but I can't put my finger on it. Hmm. Maybe it's the sign from a bus stop? That's it? Oh yes, I see it now. But what was it doing out here? I think I can just make out a small part of it. It looks like the Japanese character for come and visit, but there's something different about it. Maybe it's red rye? Well, it could be some sort of clue. Let's photograph it for evidence, Master. Wakata.
Yes, Ilya is presumably 10 years old in the Prisma Ilya version. Or at least was at the start of the show. Records. Records. What else can be used to record information? Maybe there's something disc-based? Hang on, I just thought of something. There we go, I figured we'd find one of these old formats for storing records here. VHS, baby! It's a VHS! Going back in time! That's right, I'm impressed you knew what it was. Okay, we used them. I'm a 90s kid. These things might be obsolete now, but they were all the rage back in the day. And while they might not and while they might be analog, they still qualify as a storage medium. Multiple endings? Multiple endings? Uh, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about that. So, what do you do with that? We could play it if we had a VCR, but since we don't, I'll have to hold on to it for now. Why is that? Well, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one here who knows what a VCR looks like, let alone how to use it, so... VCR? Please stop looking at me like that. I'm honestly worried I might end up dying of shock. I hear you, brother. Alright, I suppose we should get going. Who's going to stay behind and watch the cottage? Oh, I can do that. No, it's better if you come along, Murasaki. We'll need your knowledge of horror movies if we run into an enemy like the last one. Well, in that case, I guess I can. Don't kid yourself, Ilya. There's no way you could handle being here all by yourself at night, especially in these circumstances. You got the bad ending first in Exilia too. Yeah. I'm afraid I have to agree with that. Oh, you're right. I honestly didn't know what I would do if you asked me. Ah, oh, Christine. Christine. I will watch over the cottage. I swear it on my very soul. Ugh, no, man. Not you. Not you. You're probably one of the least favorite servants. There is a great void within me. You mean you forgot what happened? There was a gap inside my mind, Christine. I cannot remember what I did, Christine. I'm not your fucking Christine. Shut your face. However, I do remember my mission now. I will keep this mansion safe. I will keep this house of yours safe. It's a cottage, not a mansion. Well, whatever. If you're going to keep an eye on the place, then go for it. Thank you, O oh fair maiden. See that, Kohai? Sometimes you just need to let a servant know they're doing a good job. No way! That's brilliant! Hey, don't think I can't tell sarcasm when I hear it. <laughs> now, now. Hmm, in that case, I think I'd better stay behind and keep an eye on things here, too. See you all later! Do you like Fate Stay Night, Ilya, or Youthful Ilya, and have played none? I don't care about regular first-person shooters. The only one I ever have cared about is Halo, specifically Halo 3. Um, because, yeah, I like to see my freaking character. And if it's FPS, I just don't give a damn. As far as the Ilya, um, I like Fate Stay Night Ilya better because I have more story about her that I understand. But I, I like Prisma Ilya, too, because it's cool seeing her, you know, get her moment to kick ass, you know? Are you sure you'll be okay? Of course, you don't have to worry about me. I'm a magical girl, remember? Okay, let's get going. It shouldn't be too dangerous during the day. You could also run into darkness traps just about anywhere. So please do be careful, Miss Master. Thanks. See you later. 
Yeah, I didn't play Halo Infinite. Okay. Yes? You cannot fool me, young girl. The sun may be high in the sky right now. It may not be moonless night. Sorry. It may not be moonless night. Wait. Not be a moonless night right now. But I can still see the exhaustion weighing heavily on your eyelids. Now sleep. Sleep and be at peace. Oh, I guess I was sleepier than I realized. Thank you, Phantom. I'll go take a nap right now. Sleep, sleep. God, he sounds like a creeper. There we go. Now to clean this room as quietly as possible. I'll have to make sure it's beautifully decorated as well. Oh! You too, weak creature. Go on, go to sleep. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Phantom's gonna... Gank you while you sleep. I don't know. I don't know what the rest of the lyrics I could use for that. Ilya is jealous. Oh, wow. The cicadas are really making a racket, aren't they? Those are Min Min cicadas. They're arguably an essential part of summer in Japan. Well, maybe not all of Japan, since there aren't too many out in the western side, but nonetheless. Honestly, I don't see a whole lot of difference between cicadas and people. Here we go. Well, I guess when you've lived as long as you have, everything with a finite lifespan can sort of blend together. Oh wait, I know. Humans are more resilient and much greedier than cicadas. Harsh, but fair. What? It's a compliment. Hmm? Is something wrong? It's nothing. I just got distracted for a moment. Anyway, is that the house there? Seems that way. Seems that way. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Phantom of the Opera's a fucking turd. That's, that's as good as I'm gonna get. Well, I can see signs of habitation, but they're pretty old. I think it's safe to say this place is abandoned. Ugh, it's so dusty in here. I think I'm gonna... Oh, that was a cute sneeze. Who asked you? Are you okay? Do you need a handkerchief? I'm fine. Well, if we're gonna be going through this house anyway... I'm sure no one will mind if we do a little cleaning while we're at it. Dude! Why, Emiya? Why? You guys are so dumb. It's like when Shiro's bleeding all over the place, he thinks, Oh, I gotta pick up all the floor. And look for clues as we go. She has a human form! But she doesn't think like other th humans, necessarily. And she doesn't care for the vast majority of humans, either. They just seem like... Pests. I know when I see a really bad Twitter take that has 20,000-something likes on it, I always feel like, damn, look at these insects crawling out from the woodwork that I've never seen, but apparently exist. Though, though, if we're to believe in Elon Musk, eh, then a lot of these people on Twitter may not actually be people at all, but rather just, um, bots. Bots, bots, bots. You'd marry Ilya, i uh, sorry, Emia? Well, good for you. Well, he might have competition. Huh. Ah. Wouldn't it be faster if I just blasted everything clean all at once? Yes. Oh, no, you don't. We're here to look for clues, remember? Hmm. Not a whole lot of books here, especially for how big the shelves are. I agree. There would seem to be far too few books. What a tremendous waste. So much shelf space and so few books to fill it.
I don't know. I feel like Ilya would tell Ruby, shut up. There is that green text generator. What do you mean, green text generator? I've never heard of this. You seem very captivated by those magazines, Lord Emia. Isn't that a staple of cleaning? One minute you're dusting, next thing you know you're reading. It's not that, Master. Though that's not to say you're wrong. I could never resist the pull of a good shonen manga. Oh yeah? But in this case, I wasn't reading the magazines. I was just checking their publication dates. They're pretty old and beat up, but I can still make out the era name. Check it out. They are from the Showa period, which means they're from the eight, uh, but they're from the 80s at the latest. Yikes, you weren't kidding when you said they were old. I've only ever seen magazines like this in my social studies textbook. Oh, uh, right, I guess you wouldn't have, would you? Hey, Kohai, why does Emil look so depressed now? Is there something I'm missing? Just be glad you never had to worry about getting old. Huh? The generation gap does have a way of hurting older people when they least expect it, doesn't it? Flashing back to her painful court days. Suffice to say, this house has been abandoned at least 30 years, and probably more. Unfortunately, that's all we can determine for now. If we find any journals and such, we might be able to learn why it was abandoned. But even if we do, it's still anyone's guess as to whether they'll tell us anything about this singularity. Huh. Master, could I say something? Sup. What's up? I've played Halos 1, 2, and 3. Will I give Silent Hill games a chance? Maybe eventually, but again, it's not a priority. What's your opinion about this event so far? For me, it's the funniest event so far. Really? It seems fairly standard to me so far. Um, I'm not sure if I think it's the... I don't... Eh, I don't know. It's chill. I like it. In its own right. But I wouldn't say it's the best. I may have an idea. Can I ask all of you for help? Did I catch the Grand Carnival Phantasm dub? Yep. It's pretty good. Of course, what do you need? Do you see these bookshelves? You'd like us to carry them? Oh no, nothing that strenuous. I was just hoping you could help me move them aside. Understood. Shall we, Lord Emia? Sure thing. On three. One, two, three! Dusty floor! Aha, uh -huh, I knew it! Come everyone, this way! A bunch of handwritten books? And quite a number of them at that. Aha, uh -huh, now I get it. So the bookshelves were a secret door. That's right. I thought the shelves felt strangely shallow, and it seems I was right. These books are really packed in. There's definitely enough to go around here. And they're all the exact same type, too. I think they're a series of journals. And they're all really old from the looks of them. Yeah, we're not going to get a Senran Kagura game anytime soon because the main creator of it, like, left. This one's your least favorite? Yeah, there was certainly a higher ex uh, excitement factor with a big, like, Tatooine-style race originally, and then the whole manga convention thing, and swimsuit Jalter really kicking ass. And then, uh, you know, all the casinos and Musashi, and there was a lot of really good things in them. Even the newest one looks like it was written around 40 years ago. And the oldest one seems to be over 100 years old. I can't read them. Are they written in Japanese? No, or at least not any Japanese I know. The handwriting's fine, but the grammar's pretty screwy. It doesn't seem like they're written in Japanese or Chinese. Let me see that. 
Hmm, I can read them fine. Oh my, I'm very impressed. Knowing how to tell different characters apart is the first step to long-term survival. Remember that the next time you work on your language studies, Kohai. <laughs> Halo is more one of those games I played when it was at my friends' houses and stuff like that, and not really something I actually gave a personal crap about myself, so now that I've got anime and JRPGs and all those goodies, I just don't have the time to play or interest to play a FPS on the scale of other things I'd rather spend my time doing. I'll do my best. She's got a point, Sarah. Knowing English gives you a big leg up, but you should still know some Chinese and Arabic as well. Easier said than done. Though, of course, ultimately, how you communicate is more important than what language you use. But anyway, I think we've gotten off track. Could you read that diary for us, Yume Run? Yeah, okay, let's see. Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan's final season? Shit. It's been going on for the last four seasons, but they keep calling it the final season. I hate how they label seasons in anime these days. What part am I on? Uh... Three, I think? Now that I'm all grown up, I've decided to start keeping a journal. I'm not planning on showing this record of my life to anyone else. This is just for me to look back at the path I've taken. The Promised Land. Here, we either study relentlessly, sing our praises, uh, sing the praises of our lives here, and fight tirelessly to make our dreams a reality. Or we decide to forget everything and make our way down the mountain. As Shanren, we have to choose one or the other. Shanren? I think that's an old word that means mountain people. The education we get here may be unusual compared to the outside, but it's definitely of high quality. We can't bear to forget the mountain, not even part from it, or not even part of it. Until we can grant that wish, we live by the mountain and die by the mountain. The experiment failed. Why isn't it working? Is there still something I don't know? I've studied Magecraft closely, and my knowledge of divination, curses, and science is all first-rate. So why isn't it working? Why won't it work, you stupid bastard? <laughs> why? 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 In a moment of frustration, I kicked the you-know-what hard because it happened to be nearby. The girl vacantly stared at me from behind her mask, never looking away. What? Girl in a mask. Magecraft? Divinations? Curses? Maybe this used to be a village of mages. Whoever this writer was, they mentioned science, too. And who's the girl that showed up at the end? She seemed to come out of nowhere. How do you like Toradora? I like it very much. That was a cute little show. Very good. It'd be worth watching again. It's been ages. Especially now that it's got a dub, I might check that out. Give him excuse to watch the show again. Alright, saying you learned Japanese versus saying you've picked up some Japanese from watching anime are two separate things. For sure. But yeah, yada yada does a is like, oh man, good grief. Beats me. Oh wait, now that I look closer, I think this girl it's talking about might actually not be a living creature. Huh, sorry for interrupting, would you mind reading the rest? Yeah, yeah. Read me the spooky story! Days go by uneventfully as my research progresses. Then, one day... 
my two closest friends announced their intent to leave for the outside. I asked them why they would do that when they know they'll lose their memories. Ah. That they'll end up forgetting everything they experienced on this mountain. Spice and Wolf, that's a cute show. Kind of annoying, you know, it ends on a cliffhanger without much. Well, maybe not a cliffhanger, but it doesn't get all that deep by the end. To a Fate drama CD, yeah, you could pick up on a lot of it. That rather than throw their lives away on some dead-end research, they'd rather forget everything and start over. From the next day onward, I stood on this mountain's peak. They were dropouts, and I was going to surpass them. Have you ever watched Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, not really. I don't think I've ever sat down and just, like, watched a full episode of Yu-Gi-Oh once in my life. Maybe it was in passing, like, on the TV, but I wasn't paying attention. How long have been... How long have I been writing these journals? I've grown up, and I now know the truth. But at this point, that's not enough to change my mind. My progress may be slowed, but it's still ongoing. A new anime, Spice and Wolf, that'll be good. When one, uh, when one loses their baby teeth, permanent teeth grow in their place. But even those teeth will fall out someday. And once they do, nothing will grow in their place. Eventually, one's hair will grow white and thin. One's skin will start to droop and stain. One's energy levels will decrease, and even one's knowledge will fade. What is it? Uh, that is what it means to age. That is the fate we must overcome. We must become immortals, beings who cannot be killed, and who will never age another day. As immortals, our cells may continue to divide, but they will never degrade. Instead, they will work ceaselessly to keep us alive. It's been a while since I watched another. It's an okay anime. Have you ever watched My Next Life as a Villainous? Uh, no. Anything that starts with My Next Life or In Another World with, I immediately just go like, ugh, these days. That is the ultimate destination we must reach. Uh, we must reach. This is my first journal entry in decades. Our lives, our struggles have all been for nothing. Forgive me, oh turd bucket. We have failed. That's the long and short of it. So whoever lived here was studying immortality. Ugh. I have all the time in the world, and I still can't believe I wasted it reading that utter garbage. Uh-oh. Of all our sore spots for these journals to touch on... Forget it. I don't even care anymore. Maybe I can just blow up and solve this whole mess that way. Believe me, I wish it were that easy. I know, I know, I was just venting. At least now we have a solid lead we can pursue. If this village was studying immortality, that could well be the source of the singularity. I don't know about that. People in every corner of the world have been trying to figure out how to become immortal for pretty much all of human history. So that alone may not be enough to generate a singularity. That may be, be uh, that may be, but it's still unusual that such research was being carried out into the present day, no? Hmm, you do make a good point. As far as modern history goes, the Showa period is pretty recent. Pretty recent. Ah, I'm sorry! I don't know why I'm sorry, but I'm sorry! How do you like High School of the Dead and its awesome fan service? I love High School of the Dead. We binged that all in one night. I loved that. That was a very good time. No, it's okay. I'm sorry for bringing it up. Getting back on topic. Stay on topic. 
Science has given up on immortality for the time being, leaving it as a problem for the future. And Magecraft has used various approaches to get close, but never all the way. Which I guess explains why this village was mobilizing such diametrically opposed methodologies to crack its code. Realizing she has nothing to do now that the conversation is too complex for her to follow. Realizing she has nothing to do, that the conversation has shifted to something she couldn't care less about. Oh, come on. But then, in that case... However, yes, that's true. Did you see Legend of Dragon Ball Tale? You mean Dragon Ball Legend, the, like the live-action piece of crap? You should give Villainous a try. It's actually a really cute and fun anime. I know you don't exactly care for Isekai, but this one is worth it. Yeah. I can enjoy an isekai, I just usually enjoy them in spite of being isekai. Usually not because of it being an isekai. But they all seem generic as fuck, so unless one stands out, I don't pursue them. However, yes, that's true. Generally speaking, thinking analytically... Hmm. Hey, you may Ren, what's this? How would I know anything about a machine some human cooked up? Oh, right, I'm sorry. Wait, hang on. I actually might know. I actually might know what that is. Just give me a second. Okay? I think this is, you know, a streaming box? I didn't know they used to make them so big. No, no, not that. This is that thing he wanted. Huh? What? He found the VCR! Yahoo! Hey, uh, Emia, got a minute? I'll take a look at Villainous. I'll take a look. What does being generic mean? It means you're following a trend? without much innovation. How about that? That's what it would be to be generic. It's to be of a genre, pretty much. So if you think like, oh, what's a generic action flick? Um, dude riding a motorcycle, chick on his back, goes off a ramp while an explosion hits or something, you know, that kind of stuff. And you know, there's that. It's, it's like stereotyping for storytelling in a sense. But for in isekai, it seems generic in the sense that now that isekais are popular, they're trying to do, like, every tiny itty-bitty variation of it. So, like, in another world as an assassin, in another world as an OP person, in another world as blank, you know, and a lot of them wind up being more or less the same type of show. What's up? Whoa. I did make a video about Tanya. Um, Future Diary was good. It would probably be worth another watch for me because I kind of forgot parts of it, but it, it was it was good. A VHS player. It's perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. So this is a VCR? Exactly. Hang on, let me take a quick look. Yes, it works. Done. Now I just connect its RF cable to this old CRT TV. Just as soon as I finished fixing the frayed bits of cable, of course. You're really enjoying this, aren't you? Well, sure, lots of people like to do pet projects on summer vacation, right? There, now I just put this VHS tape we found earlier. Huh? Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? And hit play. Uh-oh, what did you forget? What did you forget? That you made porno? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Is this a leaked sex tape? Of Murasaki? Production values are out of this world, man. Like, I can hear the moans. It's very stylish. Mmm, experiment failed. Oh shit. Virtual female, what? Artificial male, selectivity assuming complete freedom spread across the body, after stimulation of the cells. And then there's a mask. Bugs! We got bugs! And then there's a figure. Who is that? Who is that? Psychological test. Psychologic. Butterfly. Mobius strip. This is some pretty cool visuals, I gotta say. Looks like a very Chinese hat. A damn mask. Sink to the shore from overseas. And then that symbol again. What was that video? It was super scary! At least I think it was. I had to close my eyes for the last half. That last character looked like... Oh gosh, oh gosh! Everyone, hold up. Take a look around. What the? It's already nighttime? And this place looks even more dilapidated now. I'm so sorry, I fucked up. I love Code Geass. So much good waifu. And very good action, compelling drama. Yes. I didn't realize we were in a different horror movie world from the one we went through yesterday. We are? And if I'm not mistaken, I think this one involves possession by a cursed object. Hi, where'd y'all go? Oh, fuck. Yeah. You drinking booze? Hello, Shadow. I can't scream. Why can't I scream? Hey. Cool. What happened? Where did I go? You didn't go anywhere. You just couldn't see us. That was close. You'd have been taken away if I hadn't stepped in. Yikes! Thank you! Listen to me, Kohai. You gotta keep it together. The fear of darkness is a deeply rooted instinct. But you're human, and you have the intelligence to illuminate darkness. So you'll be fine. Just grit your teeth and get through it. We're surrounded. Are you back to your senses now, Master? Then hit us with your orders. Got it. Let's settle this. Roger! That stopped the attack, but we're still surrounded. I'd like to just charge in and secure a route back to the cottage, but... Hang on, Lady Murasaki? Could you tell us more about the genre you mentioned? Oh, of course. This is a classic type of Japanese horror film, though as though there have been numerous Western adaptations as of late. Their stories revolve around supernatural events that take place when someone interacts with a cursed object, such as a doll, a video, a mask, and so on. Well, seeing how cursed objects really do exist, I guess it makes sense that someone would have made a movie based on them. The evil spirits in these movies are so far uh, are far more treacherous than those still bound to earthly desires. 
and will haunt those who incur their wrath till the end of time. They bear no personal grudges of their own, but hone in on anyone who happens to come in contact with their cursed item. That's the basic outline of the genre, save for one more important element. An evil spirit like this is even more difficult to defeat than a slasher from a Hollywood horror movie. Even if the protagonist takes the necessary steps to appease the spirit, the rules of the curse can't possibly be changed. Th then does that mean we're all gonna die? We're all gonna die! Holy shit! Maybe if we really were following the rules... But this isn't a movie, and servants are basically made to break rules, isn't that right? Don't forget, this is the Nasuverse, where any rule that has ever been made can and will be broken. Yes, breaking the rules might work, but I'm afraid I don't know how we could do that. Oh man, oh man, oh god, oh man, oh god. Is there anything ghosts are weak against? In Japan, most measures against spirits involve reciting sutras, sacred fire, shrines, and temples. Would those work? Hmm, I'm not sure. You could find their remains and burn them. Like Supernatural style. Actual dead spirits are one thing, but spirits from movies tend to be invulnerable to things of that nature. Even if they seem to work at first, they usually end up having no effect. Eventually, the characters usually realize that not even the most virtuous priest stands a chance against the spirit. I see. The dead spirits that appear in movies have come across to the audience as incredibly powerful forces. Which is why there are so many scenarios where the characters can't win, regardless of how strong or weak they may be. Kind of funny that a movie ghost would be even more trouble than the real thing. Hey, get ready. We've got another wave coming. Damn, I guess this isn't on our side either. Uh, time isn't on our side either. We should at least try to get away from this area and back to the cottage. We'll never stand a chance against them if we remain in their home territory. Got it. Let's not lose our focus on Master and Elia. I'll bring up the rear. Prince of Lan Ling, would you lead the way? Understood, I'll do my best. Yume Ren, Murasaki, you two handle the center. Everyone good with that? Ikuso! Woohoo! All right, let's run for it. Follow me, everyone. I'll clear a path back to the cottage. Great. Now we've got this fog to worry about, too. Try to stick together. Don't look back. Just keep moving forward. Here, Sarah, hold my hand. You got it. Nasu likes breaking his own rules, but I don't know when or how he will do so. They're trying to work on 3D anime that has that 2D look. Sometimes it works great, a lot of times it looks horrible. But I'm not ready to get rid of hand-drawn stuff just yet. There's even more of them than I thought possible. I hope we can make through this. Here I come! Tougher than the rest of them. The best of them. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. We managed to make it through, but I don't think we're out of the proverbial woods yet. We should be near the cottage now, but I still can't see it anywhere. This fog is so thick, I can't make heads or tails of where we are! Can't you scan the area or something, Ruby? Wum wum wum. Nope, got nothing. Sorry, but it doesn't look like I can scan our way out of this one. Then I'll try blowing all the fog away for a split second. All of you, get down! The 
the fog's gone. Dicky master. There's the cottage. We just need to keep heading this way. Did I read the manga of Darwin's game? I did not watch or... I didn't finish Darwin's game. Nor did I read the manga. I watched Supernatural because Arichan was really into it for a while. Ah, oh, Christine. My songstress. My song. Come, let us celebrate your safe return together. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Um, is something wrong? Is everyone all right? All good here. Sure, I'm perfectly fine. Gosh, she has some fun pictures. Yes, I think so. Those things were damn persistent. But I think we managed to... Huh? Where's Yume Ren, a.k.a. the literal bombshell we should never leave unsupervised? <laughs> Sorry about that, and please don't tell her that I left. At any rate, she was just here not too long ago. Oh, no! You killed Yume Ren! Bastards! Fucking ghosts! How did you die? How did you die, you poor, cute little thing? Stop looking at me like that, Kohai. I'm dead. They twisted me into a pretzel and bam, dead. That would have been interesting to see. Like ReZero or something. Again? Oh wow, perhaps it's unfair of me to say this since Yao Bikuni became immortal from eating mermaid flesh. But isn't it a good idea for you to die? Uh, but is it a good idea for you to die quite so much? It's fine, I'll be back to my old self soon enough. Cause this is Thrilla! They're here. But now we're in our territory. We should be more than capable of fending them off. How high is the Yume Ren death count again? I mean, technically this is just the second from this event. I don't know if she dies a lot in previous ones or whatever. But we're still missing the last piece. We need to defeat them. I don't know if this will help or not. But one of those ghosts has mystic eyes she can use to twist anyone she sees into literal knots. Oh, we know who that is. I don't think she needs to actually see you to do it either. Oh, you poor thing, you got caught. She certainly didn't have a problem mangling me in that fog, even though we couldn't see a thing. Mystic eyes, huh? That's going to be problematic. Mystic eyes, sight, fighting back conceptually. I'm so close, but I can't quite seem to connect the last few dots. What about mirrors? They've long been a staple of combating Mystic Eyes. That's not a bad idea, but I have a feeling ordinary mirrors simply won't work enough. How about this magic mirror I projected ahead of time? I feel like I'm watching one of those cooking shows where the chef has already baked a cake before putting the one they're making in the oven. There's really nothing you can't do, is there? Alright, let's try fighting back with this. Something is still nagging about me, uh, nagging at me about this, but I suppose we don't have any other choice. Damn, it's not working. I knew it. It was too much of a staple. What do you mean? It works in reality, which is why it isn't working here. Like I said earlier, this explains why exorcisms and recu uh, reciting sutras aren't working against her either. If this were a movie, we'd be in the second act, where we get our hopes up for a moment only to have them dashed again. If we're going to have a good ending, we need to figure, uh, we need something that takes things one step further. Something wild and unexpected that our opponent would never see coming. Like a ghost orgy? But how do we... Everybody take off your clothes! Are you kidding me? How can you be hungry at a time like this? I can't help it when my stomach growls. 
Oh, that reminds me that I haven't had eaten anything since lunch either. <sighs> That's it! Huh? What's it? The best way to ruin a scary scene in a movie is by having another, stronger feeling make you forget your fear. Parasite was pretty fun, yeah. For example, if the person sitting next to you at the movies were to suddenly start acting strangely, or freaking out, as they say, that would completely ruin the horror movie. I don't know about that. Okay, so what exactly do we have to do here? Maybe cook something? Smelling something good out of nowhere might jolt the movie viewers back to reality. You want me to cook something, under these circumstances? Yes, that's right. I suppose that is a lot to ask, isn't it? What's more, it would be best if we were some kind of junk food with a powerful, enticing aroma. Something like pizza, or french fries, or corn dogs. Hmm, I guess we do have the ingredients on hand. Alright, challenge accepted. As long as they have the ingredients, a true cook can cook anything, anywhere. Just buy me some time. And I'll cook up a calorie storm that's perfect for summer vacation. Aww. You know... Um... Because Shiro slash Emiya must have already seen, um, a magical mirror. Well, he proje he projects Ro Ayas. Ro Ayas is a shield, not a, uh, sword. So, it happens. But, um, I've heard that KFC doesn't do potato wedges anymore, which is depressing. I guess they had a potato shortage or something, which is like, really? That sucks. What else? Maybe to cancel out the sight of something scary. I could take my top off. Jiggle these badongas around. Yes, that may work. If we had some music playing, music powerful enough to stand up to the girl's fear. I think I might know something you can... someone who can help with that. Christine! Christine! Oh! You called for me, so I shall sing. You sang for me, so I shall play an accompaniment. Yes, I think I should take it from here. Phantom! Listen now, young girl to the song of my love and the melody of my wickedness. I mean, it's not exactly upbeat music. Like I said, just take off your top and solve most problems. Let the show begin, Christine. You may Ren dancing to Thriller. That would be cute. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Plunk. I guess she was just sighing. I can't believe it. Singing and eating while fighting her actually worked. Ugh, I ate too much while I was still recovering from coming back to life. Are you okay? What the hell did I just eat? I swear you humans come up with all the weirdest ideas. I didn't even know it was possible to deep fry bacon. It's yummy, but I can actually feel the grease hardening my arteries. Ugh. Yeah, you don't have that kind of figure eating fried bacon. You just don't. Oh, your song of grief echoes throughout my heart. Ah, oh, my beautiful ghost. Even your vomit glistens like the stars in the sky. I haven't thrown up anything. And knock it off with the weird songs already. What a bizarre and incomprehensible spirit. A strange creature through and through. Huh. I lost, didn't I? Looks that way. That's too bad. I still wanted to twist more people into knots. Dead spirits are supposed to take down their opponents quickly, quietly, and stealthily. Not much chance of that now that they've ruined the atmosphere with food and music. I guess someone was using me for their own ends. I'm sorry for bothering you. My bro used to be, and kind of, I guess, maybe still is, in a 
light sense, a low-key sense, afraid of werewolves. And werewolves like like Bad Moon, um, Silver Bullet, you know, those kind of things, uh, American Werewolf in London, that kind of stuff. See you later, Cool Kermit 95. <clears throat> and um, I think at one point, either me or somebody else was telling him that, you know, to stop being afraid of, you know, werewolves. Just, just like, imagine, like, a werewolf surfing on the ocean. Like, da -da 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 you know, and I think that's funny. That's, that's basically what we just did to poor Fuji, you know? Aha, now I see. I don't know who you are, but thanks to you, I now know there's more than one way to skin a cat. Thank you for that. Uh, don't skin your cat. Don't do that. Ever. Ever. So I don't suppose you know anything about this singularity, do you? I know about the masks. Masks? Yes, masks. They're very important. In fact, they're the key to this singularity. Remember them. Yahoo! Werewolves in London. Yahoo! Werewolves in London. I think that's kind of how it goes, right? And one more thing. Be wary of dreams. Dreams? You've already been told that, dude. Both the girl who rejects dreams and the woman who manipulates them are equally dangerous. But they're also very much at odds with each other. That's all I can tell you. It wasn't of any trouble trying to twist you all into knots, since that sort of thing is my unlife's work. You're not dead yet, but I have gotten kind of tired of haunting people for no good reason. I'll come pay you another visit once things have calmed down. Good day. Caitlin P! Sorry, so late just got back from a Comic-Con, where you were cosplaying Mordred all weekend. Dude, that sounds amazing. Do you have photos? That'd be cool to see. You know, I just saw a decent cosplay on social media recently. That was a picture of a very buff Mordred. Where you're seeing it from her. Her back is facing the camera and she's looking forward. And those muscles were really something. They were really something. And I was all... Mm, they almost look too good to be a woman's muscles. And so I dug into it, and sure enough, the Mordred that I was looking at, this really high-quality photo, was from a male model who was doing Mordred. And I was like, oh, wow. It's uh, like some Korean man with big, powerful muscles who was doing a Mordred, and it looked good! But then I'm like, oh, that's weird that it's a dude. I mean, obviously, if they turned around and looked towards the camera, like, you would tell. Which Comic-Con? There's... Aren't there, like, dozens of Comic-Cons? <laughs> it's, like, a more vague name as opposed to a specific convention. Huh. I didn't realize it was already morning. Guess that means we made it through another night. So this tale of the cursed videotape is finally over, huh? You know, I still don't know what the deal was with that video. Yeah, that was Asagami Fujino. True muscle beauty knows no gender. I mean... It somewhat does. Beats me, too. Though I do remember seeing a mask in it. Seven. Huh? Didn't they show the number seven right at the end? Oh, is that what that... That was a seven? You mean those countless mysterious symbols? I suppose they did somewhat resemble sevens. Ah, well, don't worry about it. It's probably just in my head. Uh, more importantly... Uh, you don't seem like yourself, senpai. Hmm. 
Mm hmm? Oh, it's just, well, you know. I was just thinking how I almost never died twice in quick succession like this, even during the many years I was actually alive. Uh, I hope I don't end up dying in a dream or something tomorrow. That would really suck. Um, Lady Yume Ren? I believe what you've just done is commonly known as tempting fate. Shit! I knew that and I still ran my big mouth! No, I swear, what the hell is this lake's problem? It better not be cursed or anything. Why, yes, it is cursed. <gasps> there you go. Hello, lovely master. Uh, thanks? Grandcon, or Grandecon. <laughs> Say, could I ask you all for something? How do you distinguish dreams from reality? The fact that when you wake up from a horrible dream, everything's back to the way it was. Oh, no, 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 I won't have it. When living things die, they return to the Earth. This is an immutable truth of the universe. After all, if not for that inevitable fact, we humans would just give up on life. Okay, so Summer Abbey is obviously very lewd. Well, not lewd. How about that? She's very exposed for her age. And that's kind of cray-cray. But I really, really do appreciate her being uncensored. For the sake of her being uncensored. You know what I mean? We would forego making the most of our short lives and fall straight into depravity. I'm kind of more in agreement with you there, Ezra. Yeah. She looks anorexic. She looks like a kid. I see little bits of muscle. Just because you can see some ribcage doesn't necessarily mean they're anorexic. That goes for you as much as anyone else, Master. The more depraved you let yourselves become, the more likely you are to lose the spark that gives your lives meaning. Oh my. Just like the people who used to live on this mountain. So I'm going to protect you from that fate. I'm going to devote every fiber of my being to keeping you safe forever. Oh yes, my name is Abigail Williams. I'll see you around, Master. Why are you acting like you've never seen her before, you dumbass? She's gone. I suppose that was her way of declaring war. I think it was. Be honest, Sarah. You attract trouble like a magnet, don't you? Why do you look happy about that? Yes. Well, Asagami Fujino being a servant is pretty cool because it's, you know, her being able to do things, you know? get revenge or save humanity. Cool stuff like that. He does, doesn't he? Not at all. Hey, how about we grab a cup of tea later? Secretly delighted to have found someone who understands what he's been through. Dreams, huh? Emiya knows my pain. You were my dream. Now who was it that said that to me again? It wasn't Lord Xiang Yu. This was way, way before I met him. No, I think there was someone who once saw me as their dream come true. Uh, me? Me, 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 me. Smiling. 
Abby, who is 12, is taller than Nero Claudius, Nero being 150 centimeters in the heels. Yep, yep, I saw pictures of that. That's pretty cool. She's a tall one. Or at least Nero is really short. Smiling. I like this, like, void. It looks cool. Let's take a look at the void. Most people smile when they're happy. They enjoy seeing the smiles of those they're close to, and are thrilled when they see a smile on the face of someone they've longed to be reunited with. But sometimes, smiling can be aggressive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. People fear those who smile at inappropriate times. Seeing as someone smile under circumstances that are clearly abnormal or during an appalling disaster would be an absolute nightmare. So like Norman Bates, there's nothing more frightening than a nightmare from which you cannot wake up. For that is indistinguishable from hell itself. Maybe it was that weird video's fall. I had such bad dreams. Oh, feels so good. Amazing artists and some epic celebs, huh? God, that sounds fun. Yeah, I want to see. You should post some pictures. And ping me or wherever. You're broke. For rolling for swimsuit servants and got nothing. Dame dane, dame yo, dame nano yo. Anata ga suki de, suki suki te. Dore dake suyoi osaka de mo. I don't know the rest of the song. Uh. Yeah, I don't know the rest of the song, actually. That's usually where the meme cuts out. <laughs> Will I do a Code Geass? A Smash or Pass video? I, I would smash probably most of it. Like, all the waifu are totally acceptable. So, I don't know. Damn, things are escalating faster than I expected. I can't help you under these circumstances, but I have to at least tell you this. So is this event going to be literally split into two parts, kind of like Summer 1 was? Or how Caldea, Summer Heat Odyssey, and Summer, you know, the one we were in jail is like the second half. Smash or pass for Fate Servants. I feel like my tier list more or less would do the same, right? It would have to be like a smash or pass of just various anime characters. And they wouldn't be allowed to be ones that I curated. Because that would be too obvious. Like, you'd have to give me a list of characters. And I'd have to smash pass. Without knowing as much about them, maybe. Or at least not having the chance to choose them. You got to meet Veronica Taylor. Oh, man. She's very good. Am I familiar with Rosario Vampire? Yeah. I didn't really get into, like, watching it, but I'm aware of it, for sure. I can't help you under these circumstances, but I have to at least tell you this. Listen very closely. Dreams are dangerous. Dangerous! When you sleep, try to do so at the same time as someone else as much as you possibly can. If something goes wrong, I won't be able to help you. I mean, Ritsuka's dreams have always done weird shit for her. No, it's one map? Good. I wonder when we'll finally have the entirety of the narrative available to us. Mm, my head's all heavy. Are you feeling okay, Sarah? Me too. It's so bad I can't even tell if I managed to fall asleep at all. 
man. Coming back to life after being twisted to death is pretty tiring. Black Lagoon Edition, there's like one what maybe two waifu in that whole show, and then the rest are just like a bunch of dudes. I'm still sore in all sorts of places. Uh -huh. Nah, there, there's like three, I guess. It would seem you're all thoroughly exhausted. Including you, Sarah. You look awfully pale, you know that? Would you like me to inject some of my special magical energy drink directly into your veins? No, don't do it, Sarah! Trust me! I feel like I'm gonna collapse. Good morning, Sarah. Senpai, that is. I'm sorry to do it over the communicator, but there's something I need to tell you. What's up? Male servants only? That it would be like Astolfo and that's it. I'm afraid I'm feeling so sluggish today that I can barely move a muscle. Wait, who voices in Dragon Ball Super? Sailor Pluto? Wait, did we change people? Yeah, I know her as Ash from Pokemon. I know her as, um... Amelia, right? Is her... Yeah, Amelia from Slayers? Yeah. I mean, I know it's her. I was just trying to think of the name is actually Amelia. Is it safe to put magical energy in your body? I mean, kinda, yeah. There are about six waifu. Well, it would, again, it would be a much more fun video if you spread out the waifu over multiple franchises. I'd be willing to do that, but even then, the Smasher Pass thing, I don't know what would be amusing or not regarding it, because, like, eh. It's like, is it that amusing to hear me say that I'd smash a bunch of waifu that are obviously smashable? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, like, different when it's, like, abstract, like, Pokemon, because it's like, why would you smash a Pokemon? But that's kind of, like, the stupid humor of it. And you could, anyone could do that, though, so that's weird. I guess I just, I, I, maybe I don't get the appeal of the Smasher Pass. I'm afraid I'm feeling so sluggish today that I can barely move a muscle. I'm sorry to trouble you, but would it be okay if I took a little nap? I advise Lady Mush to do so, by the way. I told her she should be forthright about how she feels, and that she should do so and via the communicator. Horror anime. <laughs> As you can probably imagine, Master, Lady Mashu was uh, initially going to try and go about her usual day despite being in such poor condition. But that simply will not do. When one needs rest, one must rest. That's all there is to it. Fair enough. Nothing good can come from continuing to push yourself beyond your limits. So I managed to calm Lady Mashu down with a bit of tough love. By which I mean I pinned her to the bed. Ooh. Ooh. Incidentally, my shoulders are feeling somewhat heavy as well. So I too will be taking a nap. Oh, right, because they told us not to sleep or sleep with other people. There you go. Besides, Lord Yoshinaka always said he liked women with great appetites for both food and sleep. Now, if you'll excuse me... Did you just fall asleep on top of her? Hey, don't go... F don't fall asleep here. Go back to your own room. Uh, oh, Tomoe, well, there you have it, Master. I can't get out of bed anymore, even if I wanted to. I'm sorry. Please, don't be. Take as much time as you need. 
Okay, I will. Thank you. Though I have to say, you sound a little under the weather too. Please don't push yourself too hard, senpai. Okay, see you later. She wasn't kidding. You really do look awful. I think you might just have to take the whole day off. I wish I could sleep in too. Seriously, my shoulders are killing me. Oh, what I wouldn't give for another session with that Enma Te Masseuse. I feel the same uh, about wanting to sleep, not about the masseuse. It seems that almost all of us are feeling unusually sluggish today. We'll never be able to fight properly like this. I suggest we leave a skeleton crew of servants on guard duty while the rest of us take a nap. Ugh, taking a nap sounds nice. I just hope I don't have any scary dreams. Then it's settled. We all agree that taking a nap today is the way to go. I had a really good dream last night for the latter part of my sleep. Um, it was basically just me in like this really expansive, really retro like video game slash anime store. So it just had all sorts of cool stuff and I could just spend hours and hours looking through each and every, you know, thing. They had all these old console games, all these old JRPGs and like PS1, NES, all that stuff just like stocked and then there's just all sorts of like random DVDs and it, it was cool. Like, I love that kind of thing and there's not enough of it. Then it's settled. We all agree that taking a nap today is the way to go. Me, Prince of Lan Ling, and Phantom will all stay up and keep watch. So the rest of you can relax and en fully enjoy your naps. What about you, Emiya? Will you be okay? Of course. Like our independent action skill suggests, some archers also make really good rangers. Well, I wouldn't say I'm the best ranger, I'm a fairly experienced outdoorsman. Honestly, while it's kind of worrying that so many servants want to sleep at all, it may be that there's something about this singularity that makes them need as much rest as a normal person. Anyway, suffice to say, I'm doing better than the other servants here, so don't worry about me. It's like you never know what kind of, like, promotional posters or... I guess maybe figures or other cool things you would find. Because I, I love 80s and 90s anime and stuff like that. And the idea that I could come across one that I've never seen before and just re-experience, it's like, hell yeah! It was a fun dream. And seeing as Prince of Lan Ling used to be a field general, he's also used to camping out. As for Phantom, I expect his mental corruption is actually helping in this case. Whoa, that was weird. Oh, I guess they meant to blur him. There, you see? You've obviously hit your limits. Lay down before you fall down. Get some rest. That you made love with Aoko? <laughs> this is a pretty good dream, huh? You'll be perfectly safe, I promise. Now go on, off to bed. Sweet dreams. Wow, you really are a good big brother. You're making me feel so secure now that I'm falling asleep too. Sleep well, everyone. Hopefully the author will finish his manuscript while we're napping. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. Interesting. Hello, Abby. I think those are your little crazy keys. And where might you be off to, hmm? Oh, no, you don't. Abby? I refuse to let you avoid facing reality, especially by escaping into a dream. Run all you like, but you can't escape reality. There's no shortcut to make life easier, and you can only deceive yourself for so long. 
the false joys you indulge in so much, the primal fear that wells up from the chaotic abyss, all of that is reality. No matter how far you run, reality is always waiting for you when you wake. So it's better for all of you to just stay right in the palm of my hand, forever. As long as you stay here, you'll be safe forever, and ever, and ever. Ah, uh, shut up already! What is this place anyway? Huh? Is it morning already? I kind of hope not, since mornings aren't usually so dark. Hmm, I see. So you all slept at the same time, huh? Too bad it won't work. You're in my land now, and since I can come and go between dreams as I like, there's nothing you can do to stop me. Besides, do all you servants even need to be here? Deep down you know I'm the only one you really need. Isn't that right, Master? You're... It's alright, Master. Don't worry. I'm on your side. I'm the only one who is. Don't lump me in with all those other servants. Alright, bitch. I've heard enough. What the? It felt like it went right through her. I already told you it won't work. Just give in already. Yikes, she's growing even bigger. Even Shadow shouldn't get that big, no matter how you position the lamp. She's right, there's no way we can beat her. Let's get out of here, Sarah. It looks like we can't beat her here, so I think our only choice is to go somewhere else. Hang on, is this a dream? It is, right? How are we supposed to escape a dream? Maybe we just have to wake up? But how do we do that? Pfft. You should see your face when you're pinching your own cheeks like that, Elia. It's adorably childish. Actually, never mind. I just saved an image to my Ilya fun folder, so you'll be able to see it no problem. Wait, come to think of it, what am I even doing here with you? How should I know? Hey, here's a thought. Run! Run. <laughs> Where are you going? That way only leads to false dreams. This is my land. This dream is my reality. Where else will you find an abyss as sweetly comforting as this one? So please relax. Enjoy yourselves all you like, but whatever you do, don't you dare gorge yourself on dreams until you forget reality. I feel like Kokto would be a little pissed off if you banged Shiki. <sighs> I see the light. Miss, look, there's a light over there. Never run toward the light. I don't know what's up with that, but it's got to be better than staying here. No, you don't. You mustn't go that way. No, stop. Come back. Come back already. She's not chasing us anymore. We just have to keep going. And we're back at the lake. Why are you running? Where are we now? Beats me. It looks like the singularity, but I think we're still in the dream. Be careful. Whatever this place is, it can't possibly be good news for us. Is that girl still following us? No, I think we lost her. Ugh. Ah! What's that? Senpai, I thought I heard voices. So this is where you were. Mashu, it's you! Ilya, I'm so glad to see you're alright. Oh, oh, I missed you so much. This is a surprise. I didn't expect to find you here, Master. 
As strange as it is to run into you in a dream like this, I'm relieved to see you're all right. We are in a dream now, right? That's right. Based on everything we've been able to put together, that seems to be the only explanation. I can't put my finger on anything specific, but everything about this place feels hazy and ill-defined. Are you guys running away from something, too? No, we were... <gasps> we are discovered. Everyone, prepare for battle. Blah. What in the world are those things? I think those creatures are from this world. Wow, they're drooling a lot. Does that mean they're hungry? Oh well, they don't seem to be in need of assistance, so they don't do anything for me. Not really the time for analysis. They've got us surrounded. Hmm. While we do match their numbers, our abilities may be limited while we're in the stream world. We'll have to be very careful. Okay, guys. Concentrate your fire on a single creature so we can break through them. Understood. This shall be my opportunity to demonstrate what the Shinkagaryu VR is all about. Huh. I just don't... I just realized I don't know what VR stands for. We may no longer be surrounded, but there are still a lot of beasts hot on our tails. Is there anywhere we can go to escape them? Oh, look over there! What about that big building? Wait, laser raptors were very much present in the Sengoku era? <laughs> a fancy hotel in our dream? This is just what we needed. We may have our differences, but right now, we all have a common cause. The hotel looks sturdy, so I think we should be able to take shelter there, no? That would be my recommendation as well. My, be my beloved and I will bring up the rear. She's like, oh my, you bringing up my rear? That'd be nice. We need another doujin! Oh, it looks like those beasts can't make their way here. We're safe. What is this place? It sure looks like a hotel, but... <laughs> That's because it is a hotel, young miss. Who are you? Oh, of course. Where are my manners? My name's William. My name's Jeff. I'm the manager for the smiling hotel here. I'm guessing you don't have a reservation, but can I assume you'll all be spending the night with us? You're the manager? The caretaker, if you like. Point is, this hotel belongs to me. So, you're William Tell, then? Uh, no, no Tell here, just William. William! Now here, come with me. We haven't had this many guests in a long time. But I'll go ahead and get your rooms ready as soon as I can, okay? What do you think we should do, senpai? Uh, let's play along and see what we can learn. Oh yes, we have two types of rooms for large groups. Suites and singles. Which would you prefer? Master, I think it would be safest if we all stayed together as much as possible. Let's go with the suite, then. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Then in the meantime, let me show you to the lounge. You're all more than welcome to relax and enjoy a cup of coffee there while, you, while we prepare your room. I don't care much for coffee. It's so bitter, even with three lumps of sugar. Though I have gotten pretty good at making it, since Mr. Sourpuss likes to guzzle it while he's writing. I don't like it either. Maybe they have hot chocolate too? Right. Or, oh, Elia. Still as childish as ever, I see. I'd get hot chocolate. Aren't we getting ahead of ourselves? I mean, is it even possible to eat or drink in a dream? I swear this world is so weird. 
Oh well, in the meantime, we may as well check it out. And hey, at least we shouldn't have to worry about dying, since this is a dream and all. Oh no, why did she have to say that? In movies like this, the trope is very clear. If you die in your dream, you die in real life. Then again, Lady Yume Ren doesn't seem to be all that adversely affected by death, so maybe... Here we are. Go ahead and make yourselves at home with this reused background from previous events. Oh, and please don't mind the other guests. Other guests? Well, hey there. Quite the assortment of guests tonight, William. Must be nice to have a booming business. Yep. Well, hello there. How nice to meet you all. It goes to show you never really do know when or where the next business opportunity will present itself. Come, we simply must exchange business cards. Here's mine. The fuck? <coughs> um, hang on. Make me sh uh, let me make sure I've got everything straight. Your name's not Columbus, but rather just plain Christopher? Damn straight. I'm just your average everyday merchant slash sailor. Mm, this red wine they've got here is not half bad. Care to join me? <sighs> Damn it all. How's a guy supposed to get by in an economy? Economy like this without a stiff drink? And if your business card is anything to go by, you're just... You must be Spartacus PX. Indeed, indeed. I most certainly am. Do you need any more business cards? You don't? How genteel. I dare say you have the makings of a star. It would seem this Lord Spartacus is not the Lord Spartacus we know either. I'm not quite sure what a producer slash talent scout does for a living, but I produce we all... But I suppose we all know that this is apparently his profession. What brings you two here? Hmm, good question. Now, what was it again? Damn, that's right, I just remembered. To look ugly as fucking ruin your summer. I couldn't make it. There was a place I knew I wanted to get to. A place I had to get to, and I failed. I just didn't have what it takes, in all sorts of ways. Damn it! Damn it! All that bowing and scraping I did to convince those royal vultures of the merits of my expedition, and they still refused to sponsor me! Damn it all! Ew! What did you just do? Oh, you drank. All I can do now is drown my sorrows in wine! <laughs> still, I'm not giving up! As for myself, I'm here on business, of course. My job is to uncover new talent wherever it may be hiding. No matter how difficult my task may be, I will throw myself at it with a plume. Indeed, there is nothing I would not do for my beloved company, Imperial Incorporated. I will gladly accept any pain or punishment they have in store for me. I will sacrifice myself for them, body and soul, if I must. Oh, God. Now then, do you all have resumes listing your measurements with you? You don't? Not a problem. In that case, you can just tell me yourselves. I think it's safe to say that these are almost certainly not the servants we know. The Columbus and Spartacus we know would definitely never say anything like that after all. It could be we're seeing a different side of them than usual, but I suspect this isn't the case, either. I wonder what's going on. Hey, this is all a dream anyway, right? I don't know or care much either way, but it can't be that surprising if things are a little different here than they are in reality. You are right, I suppose, but there still is something bizarrely unpleasant, sorry, unpleasant about all of this. It is hard to explain, but everything feels so out of place here, it's almost unnerving. 
Maybe we should try to learn more. Why don't you all keep talking amongst yourselves while I go make coffee? Oh, there's an ordinary water cooler here, too. I know what I'm having. I'll just have some water, too, please. I'm really thirsty for some reason. Even though you're carrying a water hose? Huh? What's that smell? Ugh! Ah! What's the matter? The water! It looked like blood! Huh? Now it just looks like regular water. Sheesh, Elia, what's gotten into you? But I'm sure I saw it. Heck, I even smelled it. What's going on? What's the matter, girly? See something spooky? <laughs> Take it from me. Times like that, the best thing you can do is wash your worries away with wine. Don't get her drunk. Deep, deep red wine. The kind that almost looks like blood. <laughs> Ooh, I sense great talent in that frightened expression of yours. You'd be perfect for prank shows. They never go out of style. And on top of that, you're a sweet and pretty little thing, too. How would you like to change the world with me? You only need two things. The will to rebel against all you've been up until now, and the will to follow the script and the company's instructions faithfully, no matter what. I... Uh, huh? Oh, Trat. The carpet's all soaked where you spilled your water. Is there something I can wipe it dry with? Something the matter here? Ah, I see someone spilled some water. Well, don't you worry about that. I'll take care of it later. Anyway, your room's all ready. Here are your keys. Shall I show it to you now? No, that's all right. I'm sure we can find it ourselves. Besides, we're still admiring your magnificent hotel. I love the design work here. Would you mind if we took a look around? Not at all. When you're ready to go to your room, there's a map by the entrance that will lead you right to it. In the meantime, by all means, feel free to walk around. But do keep in mind that the other rooms are reserved solely for our other guests, so please be careful not to disturb them. And while I trust this goes without saying, I must ask that you stay out of the hotel staff areas as well. That includes my office and the boiler room, too. There are a few dangerous areas, and I cannot vouch for your safety if you wander where you oughtn't to be. You see? So be careful now! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Why? Why are you laughing? This is the room number written on our keys, so our room should be right around here. Alright, no matter where we, uh... Now that we know where our room is, what shall we do next? Um, we look around the hotel and see what we can find. Right! This hotel must be some, uh, somehow be important in this world. Agreed. I suspect the key to our escape lies somewhere within this building. No, I am certain of it. That is always how it works in video games, so I'm sure it applies here as well. For example, in one game you must find and play an enormous grand piano to... Hmm, this place is so big, I don't even know where to begin. What do you mean? It's easy. We just start walking around. Find whatever door stands out to you. And open it! Huh? We shouldn't at least... Uh, shouldn't we at least knock before... Not if we want people in their skivvies. Oh! 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 Oh no, she's like... Oh, la, 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 la. Um, is she gonna say the line, though? I'm sorry for bothering you. Yes, I think I'll go ahead and kill you. That way I can be sure my secret stays safe. We won't tell anyone, I promise! It's too late for that. 
Besides, you can't just put a lock on someone's lips. Certainly not this many someones. Yeah, exactly. There's almost zero humans out there who can actually keep a secret for their whole lives. I must ask, Lady Yume Ren, have you ever seen a bad situation you did not immediately try to make worse? Everyone enjoys nice, cool popsicles in summer. Now you'll get to become some yourselves. So they got Charlemagne from F8XL and FGO? Yeah, I know that. It's very good. People are very excited about him. Don't. Don't. Um, for the time being, let's at least put her in her bed, yeah. Now, will you consider knocking next time? Yeah, yeah, message received. Yeah, I know, you'd stick your face in front of the fan and go, Whoa, la, la, la. It's fun. Okay, senpai, I'll do my best. Yes? Come in. Senpai. One voice sounded both cool and cute, and another sounded both grown up and childish, so maybe? Oh! What the? There you are. Hi there, Master! Yay, it's Master! That smell, have you two been drinking again? What's this, room service? Nice, nice, very nice. E nah. I can't believe we ordered a pizza and got Master instead. This hotel really is a dream come true, and it's making me hungry as fuck. Woohoo! Of course, we can't cut this sweet treat into pieces, so I guess we'll just have to eat her whole. Together. I'm sorry, but that will have to wait until another time. We're in the middle of an investigation. Oh, you're here too, Mashu. Damn it. Have you ever had a dream where you made love with your waifu? Mm, I don't know. Maybe I did. I don't think I remember it, though. Furthermore, I regret to inform you that Master is not on the menu, delivery or otherwise. Fooey! I didn't know the goody goodies were here, too. I guess this is as far as we go today. You guys really need to learn to tone it down. Anyway, you okay, Kohai? I think so. Putting her story idea notebook away with a slightly disappointed expression. A question, if I may. Are you two staying at this hotel? Uh, yeah, we are. You got a problem with that? No, we're not paying for the room, but the manager guy said we didn't have to. There's nothing better than ordering a pizza and lounging around a free, uh, lounging around a free hotel room. Sounds like lounging is about all you're good for right now. Well, it would seem this line of questioning has not been productive. Thank you for your time, but I think we'd best be on our way. What? You mean we're not gonna drink with us? As fond as I am a drink, sorry. I'm as fond of drink as the next person, but I'm not fond of drunkards getting in my face, as it say. Ah, oh, don't worry, we only get in Master's face. Or perhaps it would be all right then? No, Sigurd, it wouldn't. It would set a terrible example for Master. Right, right you are, my beloved. Oh man! Oh, I swear, those two are always... Just doing whatever they want, aren't they? Be careful they don't end up eating you alive, Kohai. Um, you may Ren, I wanted to say thank you. Oh, uh, sure, no problem. Alright, let's keep going and see what we find in the next room. Come on in. Hello, pardon the intrusion. Rah! They're attacking us in a rage. We'll have to subdue them. What happened to come on in? I'm sorry, I should have been more careful. Don't blame yourself, Masha. You couldn't have known. But... Mr. William explicitly told us not to cause any trouble with the other guests. And how do you think we'll get anywhere if we don't investigate everything we can? 
Just go wherever you feel like. If a place turns out to be a dead end, then at least we crossed it off the list. And if we find someone we can talk to, we get whatever information we can out of them. Simple. Besides, this is all just a dream, so nothing that happens here really matters anyway, like gambling. Now come on, let's go take care of this already. I can understand your position on dreams. I can even approve of you, uh, your rather rough approach to dealing with them. But, as I'm in this dream with my beloved, I'm in no particular ri uh, rush to wake. Ah. Uh. Say, here's an idea. Why don't we split up again? My beloved and I can go off on our own while... Just make sure you don't make the same mistake again. You don't want to tempt fate when you don't have to. Same mistake again? I see, you do have a point. Alright, let's continue to search for information together. I agree. Something tells me dispersing our fighting forces would be a very bad idea right now. Still, this is a very large hotel. If we're all going to move about as a group, we'll need to be prudent about resting when necessary. I agree, too. However, there is one thing I must insist on from all of you. If any of you should happen to encounter another occult phenomenon, like we did just now, please make absolutely sure to tell the rest of us about it. If you think you may have seen something strange, but think it might have just been in your head, don't you dare go off to check it by yourself. Okay, I think that's enough exploring now. Let's take a break. Right, Senpai. It's hard to figure out what we should do next. Especially since we can't leave the hotel. And we're not even getting hungry. Presumably because this is just a dream. Well, if you're looking for something to do, might I suggest going for a dip in the pool? Ah! <gasps> Sorry about that. You have a pool here, Mr. William? Oh, sure. It's an underground pool. It's really quite nice, if I do say so myself. There we go, senpai. Why don't we go check it out? Ooh, baby. All right, let's go see this pool. That is not a pool. Nor is it underground. That's literally a ladder to the fucking, like, beach or some shit. Oh, wow, it's amazing! Although, now that I'm looking closer, it's all just a backdrop. Yes, it is. This is seemingly endless blue sky is entirely artificial. But of course the pool is real, so that's a relief. Did you come here to swim too, Murasaki? No, I thought I'd just relax by the poolside. And read a book I brought with me. Sarah, Mashu, Ilya! Can you believe this is all fake? It's amazing someone went to all this trouble. Feels like Las Vegas all over again. Because it's really a CG stolen right from it. You know, the one you couldn't go to because you're basically a child. Who asked you? <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go swimming. Come on, Mashu and Sarah, let's all go together. What do you say, senpai? Last one ends a rotten egg. Got it. How much did you miss? I don't know when you last left. Did you just start? Because we're several hours into this stream, so... I'm glad to see them so happy. Aren't you going to go swimming too, Sigurd? No, beloved. I'm afraid the flames burning within my chest would turn this pool into a hot bath. Oh, I see. Yes. I suppose that was an odd thing to say, wasn't it? Please forget I said anything. Oh, that was a great book. You read fast. Take that! <laughs> oh no, I just realized I don't have my shield here. Oh! Sploosh. Oh, you look like a wet cat! Boo, boo, boo. 
Turns out he's a lot skinnier than he looked, huh? Here, foe, let me wrap you up in this towel until you dry off. Does she want to go for a swim? What are you waiting for? If you want to go swim, go swim. Do you think I should? I feel like it wouldn't quite match the image I've made for myself here. I don't know what that's all about. But if you want to do something, you should. At least, that's what I think. What about you, Lady Yume Ren? How come you aren't swimming? I have no interest in swimming in some fake human-made ocean substitute, that's all. But that's not how you feel, right? So go for it. Swimming's fun. Yes, I suppose you're right. Thank you, Lady Yume Ren. Besides, all your nervous poolside fidgeting is getting annoying. <laughs> All right then, I'm off to go swimming. See you later. Don't run by the pool. You'll slip and break your neck. Huh. <sighs> Although it's weird. Even though this place is artificial, I don't feel like I immediately want to leave. Maybe because we're still in a dream? Hmm. What's that over there? Is something wrong? No, oh, nah. I was just thinking how something seems out of place over there. Oh, so it does. Is that a sign from your homeland? D I don't have a homeland. But I know what you mean, and you're right. That's a yin-yang. Tai Chi diagram. What's something like that doing here? It looks like it has some sort of connection to this land as well. Perhaps it's some sort of symbol? Yeah, maybe. Is that thing why I feel so at home here? Is it reminding me of China somehow? Oh well, I guess I don't have to worry about it. At least for the time being. <sighs> okay, that's the best I can do. What do you think of our contest to see who could hold our breath the longest, Elia? Um, I'll say I lost. That's right. You came up for air a little bit before Mashu did. Way to go, Mashu! Thank you, Ilya. The water feels wonderful, doesn't it? It's so nice just floating around here. There are other kinds of pools, too. Like wave pools and current pools. But it looks like this place just has a plain old pool. Too bad. All that aside... I'm kind of surprised nobody else is swimming here. Especially considering how big the pool is. Hey! Are you sure? Because I think I just saw someone. Here goes! Ah. Ah. <laughs> Did I surprise you? I decided to see what the water was like as well. So, does that mean... That's right, I'm ready to have some fun. Slip and fall on me, please! <laughs> Alright, now that we've refreshed our spirits at the pool, let us continue with our search. I felt a little bad about messing with the manager's guy's hotel, but this is an emergency and it's all a dream anyway. Good boy. Good boy, Kenny. Oh, my cute little kitty. He wants some love. He wants some love. He's a good little boy. If we're going to escape from here, we can't be choosy about how we get it done. Then let's do this thing. Very well then, let's begin with this room. Open up! Ruby, shush, keep your voice down. Huh, looks like no one's here. I guess this room must be unoccupied. No, I'm sensing, sensing faint signs of activity. I'm certain there's someone staying here. They're in the bedroom. Then let us see what we can find. Okay, what are you doing, kitty? Kitty, no. Kitty, no, no. Don't get caught up in those cables. You silly cat. You silly cat. You're trying to get into trouble, I see. You're trying to get into trouble, my pretty kitty. Come here, I'll pet you. Um... What might this be? Is 
It looks like a notebook. Is there anything written in it? Hmm, how very bizarre. What's up? This writing is all strangely contorted. I can only assume it's from another country I know nothing about. And yet, I can still read it. Most servants are given knowledge they didn't possess while they were alive during their materialization. But I don't think that explains this notebook. Oddly enough, I can read it too. So can I. As far as I can tell, it appears to be Spanish. And while I usually only know enough Spanish to make an educated guess as to what a piece of writing says... How late am I planning to stream? I don't know. I don't know how far into this I am yet. I'm somehow able to read everything in this notebook perfectly. Maybe because this is all a dream? So what's it say, anyway? Um, let me see... Kenshinzu, good boy. Why? Why won't you believe me? Or they believe me. If you go far enough west, you end up back in the east. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Don't get me started on those idiots who don't even believe the world is round. Plato and Aristotle had it right. But even the bastards who accept the world is round just don't get it. No matter how many times I've told them. The sea that stretches out to the west might be huge, but it's not quite as huge as you stubborn jackasses think. That's right. As long as I keep moving forward without losing my way, I know I'll reach my destination. Eventually. EVENTUALLY! The land of gold Marco Polo wrote about has got to be there. I know it. Why won't anyone believe me? My theory is sound. My convictions are unshakable. All I need now are ships, sailors, and supplies. Which means it all comes down to money. Damn it, damn it, damn it! If only I had more money of my own! Yeah, don't you? That's kind of what we all think. The next few pages are a little too torn to read, so I'll skip ahead to the next passage I can make out. You just started the game? It can be a little difficult... ...to start off. But it's, it's, I think it's worth it if you like the story. It's not enough. It's still not enough. I told them it wouldn't be enough. The goddamn small-minded cheapskate king and queen. It's all their fault I had to turn back. But this isn't over yet. I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep on going, no matter what. Long as I do that, I know I'll make it there someday. I know it. I just need more money. I've got to find a way to get money. I'm not giving up, damn it. All I need is money, booze, and more money. Yeah, booze does not help you at all, dude. I'll do whatever it takes to get the money I need. Lie, cheat, steal, kill. Whatever it takes to keep heading west until I find that goddamn land of gold once and for all. El Dorado. God, help me. God. Stop whining. I think this notebook might belong to... Columbus? Well, Lord Christopher here, if we take what he said earlier at face value. But something doesn't add up. I've read his biography from our library before, and putting aside the moral worth, or the lack thereof, as the case may be, of his actions... There is no denying that his voyage left an indelible mark on human history. However, there is one significant contradiction in this notebook from the events of his biography. What's that? He never turned back. He completed his first voyage successfully. And while he may not have arrived at the continent, continent he sought, he did make it to the Caribbean islands. Which means this notebook here is based on events that never actually happened. It's as though it was written by a Lord Columbus who failed, rather than one who succeeded. So what's that mean? 
I don't know, it may have something to do with the fact that we are still in a dream, but beyond that... Hmm, it would seem that notebook is the only clue here. Then can we hurry up and get out of here? I'm starting to get chills. Good point. If there's nothing more to find here, there's no point in sticking around. Ha! <laughs> ah, I saw it. I caught you lot red-handed. You just came out of my room, didn't you? Looking for something to steal? Trying to bump me off because I ruffled too many feathers? Can't say I blame you. I've been going around asking a whole bunch of big shots for support. So if I happen to meet with an unfortunate accident before I get to Asia, it could end up tilting the balance of power in some nation somewhere after all. But never mind that now, uh, thank you, God. Thank you for sending me the boon I needed. I knew it. You lot are evil. Evil! And that means you owe me money. <laughs> Reparations, deposits, damages. I owe you, uh, I own you all now, body and soul. I'm not giving up. I'll sell, steal, make all kinds of deals. Whatever it takes to keep my voyage going. His spirit is overwhelmingly powerful. I cannot see a way to effectively fight him in this hallway, either. I think we'll need to retreat and regroup. Then let's get out of here, man! Woo! We got attacked by a psycho! <sighs> is this room empty too? Oh, thank God, uh, goodness. It doesn't look like he knows we're in here. I think we lost him. It's probably best if we stay put here for the time being. Oh, it seems there's another handwritten note here in this room. Let's see what it says. Ah, oh, swearing fealty to the absolute truth that is the company is the way to rebel against an aimless, empty life. I will submit to the company's direction. I will submit to the company's vision. I will submit to the company's managerial strategy. I will submit to the company's regulations. I will write this pledge of submission down every morning as proof of my loyalty, so that I will never forget my ceaseless, unflinching devotion to the company. Spartacus PX. And this is clearly something Spartacus wrote, but that doesn't sound like him at all either. Right, Spartacus wouldn't be who he is without his focus on rebellion. And while he does mention rebelling here, on the whole it still reads like the polar opposite of... Huh? Did anyone just hear that? I did. Definitely. Could it be an earthquake? No, it didn't last long enough for that. I think those are footsteps. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Wait, footsteps? Um, wouldn't that mean... Oh, what is this? If you're here ransacking my room, then you must be rebels, no? We're sorry! Yes, we're very sorry about this, Spartacus. Sorry isn't good enough. Rebelling against your corporate superiors is a very, 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 very bad thing. Do you get me? Uh-oh. His values may be completely different from his normal self, but he clearly remains a berserker at heart. He may no longer be capable of listening to a word we say. However, if you are willing to submit as I have, maybe we can reach an understanding. Hmm? I will accept your apology if you become idols under my management and lick my shoes as a sign of obedience. Huh? You want us to be idols? 
Is that part? Uh, is that the part that stood out to you, Ilya? Yeah, not happening. I see. Well, that's going to be a problem. A big problem. I'm a dutiful corporate servant, you see. So I absolutely cannot tolerate rebels. Never happening. Not in a million years. <laughs> then it seems you leave me no choice. I will just have to squash you rebels into submission like the ants you are. I'm not opposed to singing or dancing if it would really help make everyone else's lives easier. But somehow I don't see that happening with this man. Let's get out of here. We should be able to make a break for the hallway now. <laughs> You're not going anywhere, rebels! Now throw yourselves at my mercy! Sorry for the intrusion! Run away! Run away! Great, now we've got two scary guys coming after us. Not to worry, we are still safe. This hallway is long and unobstructed, with no sign of the enemy anywhere nearby. Long hallway, huh? Got a bad feeling about this. Master, look over there, is that... The boiler room? Guess or not, I can't have you running in the halls, for that matter. I've been getting complaints about you barging into other guests' rooms, even after I explicitly told you not to. Any villains like that are... villains. <sighs> right, that's right. Back then, I fired two arrows under that tree. After shooting someone I never should have, I shot someone wicked who needed to die. So I've got to keep going. I can't change who I am now. The sin of killing can only be absolved with more killing. So I'm going to keep shooting those who need shooting. That was close. Even I was only able to defend against his bolts. I was only just able to defend against his bolts. Indeed, they were both deadly and accurate. Please keep your guard up, everyone. Can you say what's up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here. Um, but I'm not Dreamcast guy. I don't want to say that on a whim without understanding the context. We're at a huge disadvantage here. We have to find somewhere we can fight on equal ground. <laughs> Just you wait, son. I'm gonna go back to being a father you can be proud of. Jesus Christ, dude! Ah! You can't fail as you have, as long as you never give up. So I never will. My voyage is still underway! I'll use your money, your jewels, your blood, flesh, power, anything I can to make my dream come true! We'll start you off as backup dancers in a more popular group before seeing how you do on your own. Oh, and when we put you on stage, make sure you smile for the cameras. <laughs> God damn it. I see, I see. I think what's going... I think I get what's going on here now. My guess is that those guys are the really real William Christopher and Spartacus's nightmares. They represent things like the death of their pride or the death of their souls. And now in this dream, those representations have taken on a life of their own. So they're not servants. They're not the servants we know. Probably not. I think the caretaker person was probably just assigned to that role like an actor. That's probably what happened to all these nightmares. They were forced to fit into roles of people you'd find at a hotel. And if that's true, then it could have been anyone's nightmares playing those roles, not just them. Maybe the real, real William, Christopher, and Spartacus are already safe and sound back at Caldea. If you're right, that would be a big relief. I agree. Even for nightmares, these memories seem far too painful. <laughs> then again, if they haven't woken up yet, maybe it's because they don't want to. Maybe they prefer this dream over their reality, even if it is a nightmare. I really doubt that's the case, especially for Tel. Right, a dream where he ended up killing his son would be an unbearable nightmare for him. 
<laughs> I don't know, I guess I can sort of understand where they're coming from. I know whenever I have a scary dream, I always try to realize it's a dream and wake up as soon as possible. After all, it's a lot easier to wake up from a scary dream once you know it's a dream, right? I don't love waking up to sleep paralysis, but that's definitely true. Of course, sometimes you wake up from a bad dream only to find yourself inside another one. Oh my gosh, tell me about it! You know when you're like, oh no, a bad dream! I've gotta wake up! So you try your hardest to wake up, and then when you do... But just as you're starting to relax because it was all a dream... You try to get out of bed, or you, only to find you can't move a muscle. Then you hear the front doors creaking open on Sony, you think, Oh no, a bad dream! I've gotta wake up! <laughs> so you bite your tongue in a desperate attempt to wake up, but just when you think you've succeeded... You're still stuck in bed, unable to move! And just like that, you're in a whole new bad dream! <laughs> Oh, man, don't you just hate when you get stuck in an endless sleep paralysis loop? Ilya, I think you're more tired than you realize. Maybe you should consider getting a therapist. I didn't mean me specifically, I just mean in general. More importantly, where exactly are we running to now anyway? There's only one place here with a door we know we can lock and unlock. That is our best bet. You mean the suite the manager prepared for us? True, he did give us keys to it. He may well have another copy of the key, but it should at least buy us some time to regroup. Come, let us be on our way. God, this is a long cutscene. <sighs> okay, the door's locked. Let's move some of the heavy furniture to block it. That should give us a chance to catch our breath. Oh my, this room really is spacious. We may have enough room to fight the enemy here. Do you think they'll make their way past the barricade? Yes, they will. Ah! Thanks to Lady Sessioin's observations, I can finally see what's going on here. What do you mean? Similar to the slasher movie from the first day, and the ghost girls from the second, I suspect we're in another kind of horror movie now. Unfortunately, this one is a little difficult to explain. Let's see. Ghosts are not a key part of this subgenre. While it's similar to a slasher, its villains aren't so indiscriminate. Huh? What are you talking about? Imagine a situation where someone close to you, a friend perhaps, or a family member, suddenly changes into someone you don't recognize. Here's Spartacus! In some movies, there's an external force causing the change, such as a dead spirit possessing them or a strange meteor from outer space. But whatever the cause, these stories revolve around an ordinary person who, whether suddenly or gradually, experiences a total breakdown and becomes a psychotic murderer who goes on a gleeful killing spree. That sounds terrifying! I don't even want to imagine it. Aww. That poor Elia face. I'm gonna take a quick break. I need to go to the bathroom. You get this cute Elia while I'm gone, though.
I'm back. I was asking you to say that because I was going to use it as a funny bit for a vid I'm working on responding to Dreamcast Guy. Well, I don't know who Dreamcast Guy is, so I don't think that's very fair because I have nothing to do with him. That, that's my issue. I don't want to say something I don't believe in or don't care about or whatever. I like how I say I'm going to take a break and everyone's like, what? Where'd you go? Indeed, this is the psychological horror genre. Unlike slashers, which pit the protagonist against an inhuman, monstrous force of nature, The psychological horror genre consists of stories where very human villains use fear and violence to corner and harm people too weak to fight back against them. Psychological horror has been a mainstay of horror films for almost as long as they've existed. At any rate, one of the key differences between slasher villains and psychological horror villains is that the latter often has a clear reason for why they're com uh, committing their murders. Oh, you just joined. Sorry. Yeah, I was just taking a quick break. <clears throat> and since they're ordinary humans at heart, the audience is able to understand their motives, at least to an extent. But whatever the villain's reasons may be, they ultimately go too far with horrific results. Perhaps it would be better to say that most such villains end up breaking down in extreme ways. At any rate, it's that thin line between understandable and incomprehensible, the idea that any ordinary person could snap and turn dangerous under the wrong circumstances. Well, they definitely chose Christopher Columbus right when they needed a good... psycho. But that makes this subgenre so realistic, and thus more unbelievably terrifying. Or more believably, sorry. Yeah, that makes sense. And in this case, I suspect the ones who are most vulnerable. Are you and Lady Mashu, Master? The terror of having the villain kill people they're close to is one of the core aspects of this subgenre, after all. I can certainly see that. The idea of being attacked by Tell, Spartacus, and Columbus, servants we see at Caldea all the time. Well, it's genuinely frightening to think about. And now that they've been defined as nightmares, beings that exist within the rifts of madness. I'm afraid the only way to save them is to make them vanish. Understood. If they are not the same servants we know at Caldea, then I believe dispatching them quickly is our best option. Right. It makes perfect sense, but it still sounds really bad when you say it out loud. Just to make sure, we are still the good guys here, right? Lady Scepter, may I remind you that we are already in the midst of a battle for our lives. As such. It is not at all uncommon for yesterday's friend to be today's enemy, and vice versa tomorrow. If one is to survive tumultuous times, one must be willing to forgo mercy when necessary. I cannot disagree. So we just gotta kick all their asses? Got it. What are their weaknesses? Hmm, let me think. Ah, they're here! Well, at least they, they'll have a hard time getting in, right? They seem to have decided to destroy the door outright rather than open it. <laughs> oh god, no! I didn't realize this was actually a thing. <laughs> god damn it! <laughs> Aha! Now where's my money? <laughs> oh, why is his beard twitching like that? He broke the door with his beard. I think he's using it to sense his way around the room, like a shrimp's antennae. Fascinating. Just what do you think beards are? Something no magical girl will ever need. Never mind that. No, wait, never mind that now. Let's get him while he's stuck in there. Can you use your spear on him, you may run? 
I'm not sure I want to go to Lord Xiang Yu's spear and tank. Uh, I want to get it in train. I'm not sure I want to get Lord Xiang Yu's spear entangled in that guy's beard. That's what you're worried about? <laughs> now I've found you. <laughs> All this pressure on me is truly oppressive, but there is no door. An idle smile cannot literally open. God damn it. God damn. That, that's something, man. That is something. <laughs> wow. Wowie wow, wow. There, there. It's okay. Just relax and take it easy. I've watched Alien, and there's one good answer. Get out and nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. I don't have the time to tell you my top 10 anime. I can just tell you some ones I love. Violet Evergarden, Kill a Kill, Fate. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -bum. um Amagi Brilliant Park. That's, that's good some starters. There, there, it's okay. Just relax and take it easy. I'm hesitant about this myself, but those men are victims in their own right. Now that they've fused with their dream roles so completely, we can only exercise them forcibly. These poor souls have been transformed into dead spirit nightmares. So as a magical girl, Yao Bikuni, I'll make sure they pass on peacefully. Just as soon as I figure out how, these unfortunate evil spirits might have suffered extreme mental breakdowns. But I suspect that, unlike monstrous slashers, they can still be affected by ordinary physical means. Which means... We all need to chip away at them without letting their madness lead us astray. Strange as it may sound in the context of a dream. Please, allow me. I know just what to do. For the best way to fight bad dreams is with good dreams. This VR Shinkagaryu sword fighting style, Lord Tajima taught me, was originally developed for use in digital battles. Huh, good point. I guess VR games are kind of like dreaming while you're awake. Yes, exactly. Let me see. I believe Lord Tajima's exact words were, Indeed, at times, one's sword and one's dreams will be inextricably linked. One need no look further than the large number of styles with the word Muso or Dream in their name. Indeed, Ito Itotsai, the founder of... The Ito Ryu School, is said to have had his Musoken technique come to him in a dream. Furthermore, some warriors are said to have encountered the gods and the Buddha in their dreams. In other words... This is exactly what my VR Shinkagaryu is meant for. At least, that is my understanding. Be warned, I won't miss. Never again. This is it! I'm finally going to make my dreams come true! I'm not giving up! I'll never give up! Never gonna let it down! Never gonna run around and desert it! Next, I'll be giving you muscle toning pointers for swimsuit competitions. And of course, as another sign of my submission to the company, I will join you in training! Ew. You just wanted to change into a swimsuit yourself, didn't you? Possibly. Three powerful nightmares all together. Perfect. I could not ask for more worthy opponents. Now, let me show you what my dream swords can truly do. <laughs> my regrets. My fates are fading. You didn't fail at all. You're just a creep fuck. Sadly, you should have just died. Good. I'm glad. I don't know. I just can't believe we have him as an actual servant. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I lost, so I'm prepared to spend of my rest of my life as your slave. 
You were no slave. You rebelled right to the very end. I see. So I was actually a rebel all along. Very well, then. In that case, I will be glad to disappear, as it seems I am no longer needed. You were never needed. Get out of here. So I didn't kill my son after all? Thank goodness. There's one thing that you should know. This battle helped me realize that we were collected. Collected? That's right. A collection of fear, death, and murder. You all be careful out there. These enemies you think you're up against now are even more dangerous than you think. Or that you are up against now. Rest in peace. Regardless of what sort of dreams these men must be having. If this helped them forget their false selves and regain their true ones, I think it all worked out for the best. I feel even more pure-hearted now than I did before. But now we have a new concern. A collection of fear, death, and murder. Hmm. And that's not all. Did you notice what else William said, Master? You mean the enemies part? Right. If he was telling the truth, that would mean we have more than one enemy here. Well, in the meantime, at least this hotel's weirdness is all taken care of. True, all we have to do now is find a way to escape it. Then let's go do that! None of these would seem to be right. Hmm. No luck here either, huh? I'll go take a look over there. We'll come with you. Okay. Hey, Kohai, I'm gonna take a quick shower. Huh? But Murasaki said we should never go off on our own. Oh, I'll be fine. It's just a shower. Um, I'm not so sure that's... Great. Thanks. Uh-oh. No! No, she's gonna die again, goddammit! No! Stop it! Keep Norman Bates out of the shower, goddammit! Well, at least we're here, too. Are you sure about that? Huh? We're back. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any. Huh? Where's Lady Yume Ren? Taking a shower. <gasps> a shower?! Oh no, this is terrible, just terrible! Lady Yume Ren, please, come out there from, uh, from out there right now! <gasps> God damn it. Ah! Somebody get the light switch! I think this is it. Oh, someone killed me the instant the lights went out! What the hell's going on? That's what I want to know! Lady Yume Ren, taking a shower in a horror movie is, for all intents and purposes, a death sentence. But there wasn't anyone else there! As I told you before, the subgenre we're in now is psychological horror. And psychological horror films are all about the terror that comes from someone we're close to breaking down. In this movie's case, I suspect this hotel has something to do with that breakdown. Essentially, this hotel is either a kind of supernatural phenomenon, or a evil spirit is haunting it. While we may have defeated those three gentlemen, the influence of the hotel itself still lingers. I therefore believe we are not yet safe as regards to this particular movie's rules. Aha, gotcha. So what's, uh, what? So in what's fast becoming her go-to move, Yume Ren kicked the bucket again because she played right into a standard trope. That's right. Ever since the dawn of horror movies, there have always been things a character should never say if they wish to still be alive by the movie's conclusion. I'm not staying here one minute longer. We can't afford to be dragging dead weight with us. I'll be right back. When we get out of this, dinner's on you. And of course... I'm gonna go take a shower. Poor Yume Ren. At least she died doing what she loved? Ugh, this is so unfair. I just want to go home already. Anyway, it looks like we're out of the woods now. 
I thought we would wake up from the stream on our own, but maybe that's not the case. Then I suggest we go investigate our last lead here. The manager's office. The manager's office? Indeed, we found something strange in his safe. Sigurd was right, Master. There's a safe here, and it doesn't seem to be locked. Let's see what's inside. What the? Is that a lit candle? There are a number of things I could point out here, such as the dangers of leaving a lit candle unattended, or how a candle should quickly burn itself out when left in a sealed space. Damn, this stream was supposed to be in 60 frames per second, but I forgot to reset it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it! Oh well. It's not the end of the world. For the time being, this candle would seem to be very significant. I agree. I bet it's the key to this whole place. Shall we try blowing it out? Mm. Okay, here goes nothing. Look! The illusory, the illusory world is fading. We should be able to wake up now. Ah, this is the worst dream ever. <laughs> she doesn't say that. There's no Lord Xiang Yu here. I keep dying in weird ways. Yeah, if I never have another scary dream, it'll still be too soon. Huh? Something wrong? There's still something inside the sit. Ilya just vanished. Does that mean she woke up? I guess it makes sense that not everyone would wake up at the same time. I didn't even notice that Sigurd and Brynhilde were already gone, too. Oh, I think I'm waking up as well. I'm glad we were able to be together, and even in this dream, Senpai. It was very strange in a lot of ways, but in others, it almost felt safer than real life. Oh, I, I guess that's kind of strange itself, huh? We know the outside world is full of dangerous abnormalities in its own right, after all. At any rate, um, together I know we can figure out how to repair the singularity. Mashu! We should take a look at that safe. Master, I know you must have a lot on your mind right now, but I think you should take a look at what Lady Elia was talking about before she woke up. Oh, right, I almost forgot! Hey, it's the full sign! It's another bus stop sign? I hear they all managed to leave the hotel. They really do uh, value reality more than dreams, don't they? Now then. I've had a feeling something was off here for a while. But now I'm finally starting to see the whole picture. So, there may be more than one mastermind behind this, huh? <laughs> Come to think of it, that sort of thing was popular. Was a popular trend in horror movies for a while, wasn't it? So-and-so versus so-and-so? Well then, I'm perfectly happy to face these masterminds directly. There are all sorts of dreams, after all. Good dreams, bad dreams, nightmares. But... <laughs> There's nothing better than a dream from which you never wake up, right? Oh boy. What are you, what are you going on off about, Kiara? Uh, morning. Morning. Welcome back, sleepyheads. You all look like you're doing much better. What time is it now? It's 9 p.m. You were all asleep for over 12 hours. But now it seems you have fully awakened. If this is our nightmare, then our rising from slumber tonight should be happy indeed. I took turns standing guard with Prince of Lan Ling and Phantom, but we didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Hmm, 
Why are you spacing out like that? Did you actually have a nightmare, like Phantom said? See, there was this weird hotel. I see. So you remember what happened in that dream too, then, Master? You'd better, otherwise I'll have died for nothing. So what's our next move? Since I was responsible, uh, since all that was was a dream, I guess Abby was responsible for the singularity. Abigail Williams, huh? She seemed like a shy but perfectly nice girl when I met her in Caldea. But I guess getting a swimsuit either knocked a screw loose or brought out another side of her. Either way, I understand we have to do something about her, and I'm fine with that, but... Oh right, I almost forgot. What did you see at uh, the very end of the dream, Master? A bus stop sign. Like the one we saw before? I think it said Horai. Horai? Could it refer to Mount Fuji? I'm told that it used to be known as Mount Horai some time ago. No, wherever we are, it's definitely not Mount Fuji. Trust me, I've been there several times. It might be safe to assume that this once unnamed mountain was at one point called Horai. I see. It's certainly hard to believe there was a bus line here. Horai, huh? Is something wrong, you may Ren? No, it's nothing. Hmm, by the way, what's all this about a dream world? If we're going to make any sense of what just happened, I think we'll have to start there. Then allow me to explain. Though if you and Lady Sashoin could help me, Lady Ilya, uh, could help me, Lady Elia, I would greatly appreciate it. Oh, sure, no problem. Just let me wash my face and... Wait, hang on, where's Lily? Huh? I could have sworn she was just sleeping on that mattress over there. Well, she's gone now. Where the hell'd she go? Guess we'll just have to go look for her. I can assure you that not a single suspicious person entered this room. In fact, I did not sense anything suspicious at all. Damn, so we don't have a single lead then? Where could she have disappeared to? Yes, I've looked at your top 10 anime. Okay, so section six. Oh my god. So that was really, really long. Um, I was not expecting it to be that long. To the point where I'm going to have to leave this off on another stream. I think I'm going to set up a stream for Tuesday. Yeah, that makes sense. I've got a stream I'm setting up on Tuesday. We'll continue this. Um, I'm up at the current part, but I gotta read all this text. There's a lot of it. So thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, Feel free to subscribe for more anime goodness. Um, I have a... I recorded... I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was a... Uh, for a short amount of time, a Fate Grand Order VR event that they were putting on for the 5th anniversary. I think it's over now. I think they said it was lasting until the 15th. But I went in and I recorded all the good stuff. So I have a video coming out on Friday that's going to show all that stuff off for you. And... Um, this video will be archived soon enough, and I will stream on Tuesday with y'all. And until next time, celebrate your fandom.